Okay, shall we get into it? Get into real adventuring yes. with the heroes of Winter's Edge. Okay, I'm going to start with uh, your character, Jake. Okay. And I'll just do a little bit of background so you know where you're at and where you are. Okay, so you fought in the alleys of Wildgate during the Night of the Dead. You were there and you barely survived as the great undead dragon that descended on the town turned its attention onto you. And, up. and that was after you hit it with a barrage of arrows from an ambush and caught its eye. Um, its acidic spittle still burns across your torso and face, never fully healing. You feel the touch of death itself upon you. Still, you survived as you always seem to do, whether from your own skill and luck or from these almost faceless gods that seem to keep an eye on you. Um, you gathered up your corpse slayer bow and you followed the undead army north, picking off pockets of shuffling husks as they tra if they trailed too far from the pack. You spent a week assessing the enemy, studying their ways and harassing their flanks. It seemed to come to nothing as more and more undead joined over the long march. As they travelled further and further north, they went into lands that held danger even for you. And with a spit in their wake, you turned back to Wildgate, ready to report back to Gunther, your patron. You make it back. Wildgate is still a mess. The bridge is out. Half the population's gone. You trudge back into the castle, opening the door through the way, and old Tim is there waiting for you. He says, Hello, brother. Hey, Good brother. to see you made it back once again. Gunther wants a word with you. It's a grunt. And walk on. And he just nods and lets you walk on, both looking off into the distance. <laughs> okay, and as you're making your way into this room, we'll cut to J Rod's character. What room are we in? You're not in one yet. Oh, okay. This is just a little bit of backstory. <laughs> you don't exist. <laughs> yeah. There you go. This is just a little bit of a backstory so you know yeah, where you are. Okay. The last week or so has been extremely hard on you, your character. You constantly hear the call of the Bone Lord and it scrapes at your very soul. Last week has almost broken you as the natural order of life and death has been torn apart, old rituals shattered, burial rites desecrated and souls long laid to rest have been dragged back into the husks of their lifeless corpse and forced into servitude of the Bone Lord. But for the first time in a long time, you see a reason for being banished to this wintry land. Perhaps the Raven Queen has seen far and placed a once favoured champion in the path of these unnatural events as a mark of honour rather than a curse. Your book has been scribbling non-stop. Pictures of raven, ravens and doors opening. Images of stone and ice inscribed in ruins you do not understand. An image of Gunther, a foolish flop, a foolish fop who, who you have worked with before. So you turn up to his door at Wildgate. His servant Luthius, a powerful mage in his own right, answers and with a raised eyebrow says, Come in, haunted one. I was just about to send for you, and you make your way up into clanking armor and all, clanking armor, <laughs> glowy shield. Okay, those are the two that gave me a little bit of backstory. <laughs> so as as you walk in, old Aries, Emrys, Emrys, sorry, can you? Describe. You see two seated figures seated at the table. You probably recognise them, as everyone here is a hardened adventurer, and there's paths that have crossed. There's rumours that have been heard about. There's fame that has spread. But can you describe 
who they see when they look up from the table. Yeah. Um, so old Emerus is a tall, lanky, hardened old ranger. Uh, he's got long grayish white hair tied up like Nordic style with a short grayish white beard. He's like wearing really rough leather, like not like it looks built straight for practicality and not style, and it's a little bit of it's torn from where he was um, scarred in the recent battle. Um, and he's got a, a wound on his face, and that's like kind of seeping a little bit. And when these folks sitting at the table look at you, um, what sort of impression do they get? What do they think of when they see your character? What's he known for across this land? You know, <laughs> staring off into the distance <laughs> <laughs> of the north. It's, it's dark out there. <laughs> Shadows. <laughs> cool. Following close behind you, um, J Rod, your character, as I say, you can hear her clanking down the hallway as. How do you say your name again? Old Il- Aries. Il- Il- Ilra? Oh, Il- sorry. Il- Il- Ilra for you and Old Aries. Emrys. Emrys. Emrys? How do you say it? M. Oh, has it got an M in it? E-M-Y-R-S. Oh, I must doubt the M. Oh, okay. There. <laughs> cool, there we go. E-M-Y-R-S. Old Emrys is starting to take a seat with a gruff nod to the two people sitting left and right of him. Um, J-Rod, your character enters. Oh, uh, yeah. She's just a um, very large hulking paladin. Um, but... Um, kind of like covered in shadows from her natural plane of existence um, and her skin's pretty like pale but purplish um, purple eyes um, and <clears throat> has a, a spell shield um, a very dark um, staff um, it's very somber uh, dark um, but also very like uh, large and intimidating cool and is there a uh story or a reputation that follows oh yeah yeah she's uh yeah she's been banished from her from her shadowfell realm um and she's basically just yeah she's like haunted but she also is very humble and provides just like natural services for yeah just Mm -hmm. just beyond yeah no it's not like uh as for money or whatnot she just does it out of what she's expected to do and this is what's almost broken you because even your most humble is you help with burials, you help people passing on the natural progression from life to death. And even that now has been taken away from you mm-hmm. by this call of the bone lord. Okay, and as you take a seat, um, Liam will get you to introduce this hulking character that's sitting at a table. Uh, what do you look like and what's your name? Um, so, big seven foot half orc. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, in half plate armour, and is the only one there with a goofy grin on his face, just staring into nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and your name? Uh, Lobgob Nose Strangler. Lobgob? Lobgob? Lobgob. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because uh, I was mistakenly sent on a stealth mission in half plate armour. <laughs> <laughs> and when the Mark uh, tried to call for help. I put my hand over their mouth, but because I'm a seven foot giant, also covered their nose. And that's how I got the name Nose Strangler. <laughs> Still got the job done. Yeah. Okay, and yeah, he's just known as this beast of a, a man, um, absorbs a ton load of jet damage, and uh, yeah. You'll find out more as you go. <laughs> and sitting across from Lovegob is an elf. Yep. Um, Theron's a, um, he's a wood elf. He's got copper coloured skin, um, ball on top, and covered all the skin you can see, like the hands, face, <clears throat> and everything is like elven tribal tattoos. Um, he's wearing uh, plate armour as well, but it's a kind of silvery colour, very you know, elven embellishment and whatnot. Um, he is not everyone kind of knows the whole story but Gunther does because he kind of has long drinking sessions with Gunther cool. um, but he was part of the 
it was a mercenary in the first war against the giants, like 300 odd years ago or something. Mm -hmm. um, and sort of, you know, has participated in that and then has kind of lived outside the town. What's the town called again? Wildgate. Wildgate, sorry. Mm -hmm. Lived outside Wildgate since the ice came back. Mm -hmm. And he's sort of like, he's, he, he seems to be semi retired, but he sort of comes in and gets supplies every now and again and happened to be there at the time of the battle um so i guess everybody kind of knows him for, yeah. for that now um but you know he's told a lot of war stories to gunther and, yeah, yeah yeah we'll also say that gunther has actually sent you a message saying um yeah i need you old friend it's we prof possibly have a chance to tie up loose ends mm. And yeah, that's enough for you. Yeah, you you answer that. Love God, um, Gunther has worked with you before. Um, he just knows that you're a guy that gets the job done, even if it's not in the way that it is expected. And so he's sent for you as well. Um, yeah, you have a fearsome reputation, even though. Yeah, it's hard to get past your size and your bulk, even though you've got this foolish grin on your face. Yeah. There and make it out of Grove yet. I, I, I feel like this is his previous incarnation. That oh. was in the future, yeah. Okay. Nice spot, though. So, <laughs> as a little bit of impromptu role playing, it doesn't have to be much, but let's see if there's any ties that you guys can come up with that you've adventured before or if you think someone's a stranger to you and, and what have you. So, yeah, anything we create here is. Is basically your past and how it works. Mm. Yeah. Anyone want to start? Just throwing out a relationship or whatever. I feel like I might have fought with you were in the battle. Maybe we were on the the front line at some point there. Um, yeah. Like a soldier sort of thing. Well, I just know in the in the, the when the undead rose up and oh, right. in the town, so we were there at the time. What what weapon do you use? Uh, longsword. Oh, longsword. <clears throat> I guess my character would be pretty old. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, but, I'm certain of immortal, but like several hundred years old as well. Yeah, but how long have you been in Winter's yeah, Edge? Well, yeah, I hadn't really made yeah. that yeah, so of we determination. Just, yeah, yeah, so... Uh, it, I would, uh, you know, potentially my thought process would have been to recently have arrived investigating maybe like the ice in the winter, like the unexplainable Perfect. winter or whatnot. Yeah. Are we um, getting undead vibes from this character? Uh, <laughs> no, actually almost okay. the opposite. Um, right, okay. Yeah. But the, the, the ice angle is excellent one for your character because your investigations have determined that this is an unnatural, magically created ice that is holding, locking spirits into place. It's almost keeps them <clears throat> sluggish and contained and and has an unnatural amount of spirits that still wander it feeling trapped and depressed almost lethargic and this <clears throat> so and if anything my character might have been there for the the actual um dragon undead um and fought in the battle yeah we can totally say that as well um yeah the bone the existence <clears throat> of the bone bone lord um it grates at you. Everything is wrong about this elder god that's risen recently. Um, um, and yeah, you would have been drawn into this battle. You probably fought your way through hordes of undead. Um, what I'll say is interesting is all the undead that you killed remain down as, as soon as you Main. claim their soul, basically. Yeah. They stayed dead. Um, which was strange because a lot of people were killing them and then they just get back up um, as the bone lord kept calling them but the ones that fell under your blade yeah. almost like you had dominion over the, over their soul so yeah so mm -hmm. um, I would be interested in maybe uh, invest like you got directly hit yeah. I would mm -hmm. be interested in, in like maybe tending or at, like trying to investigate or see like yeah from a practical or scientific standpoint or whatnot like what his ailment was yeah how do you feel about that uh, it, <clears throat> how are they going by investigating it is it like well, uh, are doing a chant or no. are you like <coughs> with gods or something it's like this is yeah, very yeah, different yeah 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 yeah, yeah. no it would, it would be a strictly arcane ritual out of my book yeah. uh, which is 
Uh, nah, don't worry about it later. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> he carries his scars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that that would yeah. be my yeah. Yeah, so we can almost say salt, that yeah. Salt and has got hit, and they would come and uh, be interested in that. Yeah, you it, will. It, we are really looking at it, but it wouldn't let you do anything to it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and this is yeah. So I think that's a really good call for you three to oh. have shared in this battle. Um, and some of you got a history. You've got an old history with this land, um, not to do with the Bone Lord, but. The, the ice, the arriving ice interests you, that interests you because that's almost a failure on your part as far as driving back the frost giants but the land falling yeah. under yeah. ice. Um, and yeah, you, you're just drawn to this as well. Uh, you always find yourself traveling north, um, hunting, trying, trying your small part to figure out why the ice is here and diminish um, the snow walks, the snow trolls out there, and now the undead has become almost an obsession with you as well. Love, love God, God, Lud God. How do you see yourself? Would you know these people? Uh, so a You're while a... ago, I uh, heard of your um, adventures, but currently doesn't recognise you. Wait, are you a bard? Uh, part bard, yeah. But so would you be like in the tavern singing, like a, in Wildgate kind of thing, or is this like a newly? Yeah, actually. Yeah, I think we might just know you from there. <laughs> like we might just have a dream of like, oh, why is the bard here? <laughs> <laughs> so is that how you manifest as a bard? Are you a singer or? Yeah, probably a, a singer, <laughs> but a terrible one. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you don't know. You have no yeah. concept yeah. of what's yeah, going we'll on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's your just genuine enthusiasm and physical presence that everyone sort of thinks, oh, we better, you know, join in with this guy. Yeah. And they don't want to offend you and everyone just sings along. It might be really rowdy and that, but yeah. they get caught up in it. Yeah. 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 And that's sort of what makes the tab, uh, bars, uh, taverns keep hiring me. Yeah, yeah. Is because they get them to sing along. And, and it's a good out. time, yeah, everyone seems to somehow in spite of your singing have a great time and, <laughs> and that's, want that's, to drink and yeah. want to yeah. get rowdy oh, that, i mean awesome. yeah my, my singing the, voice does make i guess important, drink. <laughs> an important thing i should say about my character it looks more elven than anything as far as feature sets go yeah. i felt to communicate that okay that's great and as you're um just making small talk um Touching on, oh, I've seen you sing at the such and such pub. You were awful, but great at the same time. And, <laughs> and yeah, there's a few nods and and uh, agreements. And we'll say you were at Wildgate as well at the night of the night of the dead and held your own, defended your tavern. Um, <laughs> yeah, and. If you want drinks, you've got to pay. <laughs> That's right. No one got through the door that night without I mean, they wouldn't be climbing into that tavern because it's right next to the cliff, right? So they wouldn't yeah. be coming in the windows. And stuff. Yeah. So when you say your guy's like just got a silly smile and is he, is he dumb? Yes. Okay, so yeah, I, I love the idea of you just thinking, oh, it's a busy night and all these guys are trying to come in the tavern and you're just bouncing at the door saying, no, no, God, everyone tonight. Yeah. We're close. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and as you're talking, Gunther wanders in and says, Oh, you're all here. There's a, but you notice there's a, and you've been given meals and a wine. There's an empty spot by the table. He says, Ah, oh, except for a Torak, the unreliable. <laughs> <laughs> mighty, mighty worry, but you just can't rely on the man. <laughs> um, and so he says, But this is going to have to be enough. Um, what I've got proposed for you is, it's gonna be hard lads, I'm not gonna lie, but I think you can do it. And let me just say, it's just, it's so good to have an actual adventuring party to deal with. You won't believe who I've been dealing with later. <laughs> but now we've got hardened veterans who know their way around a sword and, a, oh, that's good. And he's got his leg up on one of the, chairs and a wine goblet and he's he's going into you know him well he's going into full gunther mode where he's center of attention and he's starting to to ramble and he talks about how he's hired um 
the White Slayers, he calls them. They might not be their official name, but that's how he calls them. You've probably heard about them, um, some of you being in Wildgate, maybe very close to Betty the White at some stage. Um, and he talks about how he sent them on a um, starter mission, basically, just to either get them killed and earn the respect from Wildgate, the citizens of Wildgate, or um, maybe to see what they're made of. And he was very surprised. And as he's talking, you notice in the background is Luthius his advisor, mage, and young Trimlane, the uh, mousy historian. And as he, every time he starts to uh, put them down a little bit, because um, he'll say like, what were we dealing with again? There was a blue boy with a beard, right? A, a beard? I don't know what he's got going for there. There was a really angry rabbit. And, and Trimlane says, they did remarkably well. They made the find of the century. You leave my boys alone. Yeah. And then Gunther goes, oh, you know, I love them. I love them. I'll send them off to get me a cork. I... <laughs> One day they'll go on real adventures, but for now, we'll just send them on these little runs. And, and Trimlane's saying, well, I'm sure they'll do well. And and yes, they'll surprise you, Gunther. He says, they've already surprised me. No one expected them to live. <laughs> except, except for corks, of course. Good old corks. And um, yeah, there's a little talk about that. You can see Luthus rolling his eyes. <coughs> as, as, and, and then Gunther says, well, we've done it, lads. We've, and he turns to you, um, Theron. Turns to you, Theron, and says, we've found the final resting place of Huskatal. And you know Huskatal is the great warlord, the great frost giant warlord. I yeah, might not. You might not. You, you probably just think he's lost a friend that... <laughs> you know, oh, that's good. Found a cat or something. <laughs> and, um, yeah, he was this great warlord that, in the final stand, he fell in battle. And as he fell, his frost giant army dragged his body away. And his seven champions stood one by one to um, to slow down your advance and help them retreat. And one by one, each champion fell to all seven champions across the coastline of Winter's Edge, fell in battle. And where they fell, they the ground was consecrated and a huge temple was put over their soul. Um, rituals, everything was done to bind their souls so they'd never um, come back again. But um, Gunther says, but it seems that some half giants and frost giants had made an alliance with the human black wing reavers to start bringing these souls back. And they've brought three, three frost giant champions back, looking to bring the other four. Once all seven are back, their power would be enough to bring back Husker Tull. But I think we've stopped that, that chain. We've broken the leadership of the Blackwing Reavers. And now the three champions, the three last frost giants, stand alone in this tomb, waiting to hear from the outside world. And that's where you come in. The white white slayers discovered all of this, that they're not ready to deal with the champions of Husker Tull. These three, the seven, are stuff of legend. Books have been written about them. And, and he turns to Trimlane and says, tell us what you found, young lady. And Trimlane pushes her giant big round glasses up and steps forward and she's got a few books. And she says, well, we believe we've identified who the three champions are from the descriptions that the uh, young boys got, got to us. And she says, there is little text about them, but I'll tell you what, what we know. Okay, the first one, she says, is called Urath the Ch Chain Dragger, who welded living chains that could cut down armies like a scythe through wheat and he can bind the will of man to his own like a dog on a master's leash. We're not quite sure what that means, but that's what's been written down here. And she says, the next one, we think, because of the white ice cloak, 
is Ismat the white bear, who can take the form of a savage bear over 20 feet tall, and that the storms of winter follow in his terrible wake. And the last one is old Mother Marrow, who can lay waste to the battlefield with disease and pestilence, and whose touch can suck out the soul of any mortal. Those are the three we think stand in this tomb. And those are the three we need you to destroy so we can lay claim to the tomb and to the body of Haskatal. Do you have any questions? Uh, do you have anything stronger than mine? <laughs> <laughs> she uh, pushes the glasses back again and says <clears throat> to another servant that's waiting nearby, Get the top shelf stuff. <laughs> but not the top, top shelf stuff. <laughs> and the servant scurries off. And soon comes back with a big jug. An orc-sized jug of something dark and thick. Well, that's more like it. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Do we have a guide? You got yourself a guide. <laughs> I'm right here. <laughs> no, that was me. <laughs> Old Tim standing at the doorway. Just, uh, he says, I, have, I took the last lot there. I can get you there and get you inside. So you've been inside? I've been as far as a servant's quarter. And the rest of them went down a long corridor. But we've got, the, we've got it mapped out. Um, so you can assume that everything that you guys saw, your other party, you basically know from the descriptions in the map. That would have been translated and communicated? Yeah. Okay. That's easy enough. If young Tim can make it, we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> young Tim. <coughs> I'll get you there, don't worry about that. Now, don't you glory boys go getting yourself killed. Are you, guys, are you guys actually brothers? You're actually brothers with old Tim, okay. This is my older brother. <laughs> but didn't get the smarts. Look who's talking. <laughs> Only a guide, but not an adventurer. And you can tell that's the sore sticking point. <laughs> Where he's like, yeah, as I say, glory boys. <laughs> Yeah, and and yeah, um, unless you've got any other questions, we can start a little montage of uh, how you old Tim leads the way. Oh, oh, don't know what that is. Yeah. Hey, before we go off, I can do a little ritual to maybe give you guys a little extra strength that requires two people to. Does anyone in? Sorry, extra strength. Extra defense. Ah. Oh. Pretty sure, why not? That's one. How, how many can you do it to? Two. Uh, to someone else, I'm pretty good. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, and then I, I gather them up. This takes about an hour. Okay. Um, start polishing the armor. I start polishing the armor and like I, I, I like really rough say all these grunts towards them uh, yeah. and move their heads together and say something like that. Uh, and then afterwards I... Congratulations, you're both married now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that is a thing, yeah. It gives, yes. gives them as a couple, it gives them... Plus two AC. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Was that a ceremony? Is yeah. that a... You guys look after each other. God, this is, this is wonderful in my house. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. I mean, I'm happy with that. That's 21 AC. <laughs> <laughs> like that all. <coughs> okay, and so we'll say you head out. You're carried by crow cats over to the yak worms. You all mount up easy in the saddle. Start your tuning your way with uh, old Tim leading the way. Um, barely a word spoken. Uh, there's a montage of, say, snow orcs looking over a crest as you rumble by taking in your silhouettes talking to each other and just saying no 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 and <laughs> slowly slinking back behind the, the ledge um yeah so you find your three-day journey each night um 
<coughs> maybe li- I'm not quite sure how you guys interact. There might be limited conversation. There might be. Um... Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, Theron's pretty friendly when you talk around campfire. I mean, mm-hmm. I know at least one of the nights I'll be trying to bench press the one of the yak worms. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you find blood, <laughs> blood gob. Yeah, crushed under a sandworm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll drag him out with my twenty five strength. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if um, if old Tim does something, old Emma sort of come behind him and. Do it better. Yeah. <laughs> he is occasionally yeah. just, you know, shooting at a post or I just come up behind him and do it better. <laughs> yeah. Split the arrow or something. Yeah. You know, like... Shatter it with your corpse layer bow. And, and yeah, he just looks at his old, his old <laughs> shitty bow and just says, oh, it's just the equipment. <laughs> just the equipment. Uh, yeah, but yeah, there's a clear tension between old Tim and old Emery's. Um, you can see a bit of resentment, really, in old Tim. Uh, he never really reached the heights that old Emery has, and old Emery seems to rub it in. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and on the third day, you arrive outside where half the mountain has fallen away, revealing a servant's entrance. And old Tim points and says, that's where we're going. That leads into the into the tomb. I'll take you up to the uh Well, it did hold a spider queen. I'll take you to that room and I'll wait there for you. Just a guide. I've got you as far as I need to take you. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah, it, it's around lunchtime where you're in this um huge the spider webs have worn away. The husks have crumbled. It looks like the Bone Lord didn't want spiders, spider husks. They're all <laughs> crushed. And, and Illyria? Illyria? Is yeah. that how you say it? You're, um, for the, as you made your journey further and further north, the Bone Lord's call is really faint in Wild Gate now. Like he's a great distance away and maybe his call is over a limit as the armies push north. But as you push further and further north, you, can, you, you could hear it getting louder and louder. But what's interesting now that you're in the tomb, it feels muffled and dampened in here, um, which piques your interest because um, you feel like his call isn't catching things in here. It's uh, coming out garbled and, and muffled. Okay, so... Is it dark? No, it's lunchtime. Oh, sorry, I thought we were in the tomb. Anyway. Oh, sorry, it is. And that'll be interesting, is people got dark vision and stuff? Is there yeah. anyone without dark vision? Uh, I don't know if I have dark vision. I could yeah. possibly do. I think I have. Pretty ob- it should be pretty obvious on the abilities. Yeah. Oh, Passives. Under senses. It'll stay down here. So yeah, I'm going off a of photo. So. Um, <laughs> Um, on the but half orc. But either way, it doesn't matter because I have a flame tongue great sword, and I'll just use that to light the way. That's go on, got one too. Yeah, so all that. Oh, okay, so, oh, I was like, I could have swore that I made sure I had that vision for this, but yeah, we're good. We're good. Yeah. Okay, so that is a thing to keep in mind, though. Something flaming like a torch could announce your approach. Um, so what we're going to say is, you guys, let me uh, just describe this scene so. <coughs> To make it clear this was where the spider's tomb was and it came out into a secret door here where you were in this um cage uh your other character gone, gone. Yeah. Uh, this is the long corridor down here that comes to this sort of terrace that looks down into this massive archway that leads all the way down here into the darkness across here and down here is the steps and this is the big I described it as a round chamber before, but for this purpose, let's say it's a big square chamber. Um, What's yeah. the deodorant? This is um, stuff that wasn't described to you by the white slayers. They didn't see these things. So when you get into view of them, I'll describe what you see. Okay. But at the moment, we can say you're way down here. You're probably going to be discussing tactics. How are you going to approach <clears throat> this? Oh, uh, Bobbleheads. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. They're bubbling. <laughs> right, so 
you may discuss tactics. Um, you haven't sighted the enemy yet. Would we? All right. <clears throat> Are we concerned about s sound? Because before I would, I would say before we approach and break the threshold of the magic door. Is that, was it there a magic door we have to go through? Oh, there's a secret door. Yeah, secret yeah. door. Is that where we're going through? Uh, yeah, you can yeah. Yeah. say so you I would, I would like to cast a silence spell over the secret door. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so I'd like to take 10 minutes and do a ritual over the secret cool. door and cast silence over Great. it. Yeah, there's um, no hurry. Um, so you take your time. Yeah, um, yeah well, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how, like, uh, what our approach to this is, but uh, I'm very cautious of my loud armor. And yeah, the barrier. And cool, cool. Okay, so yeah, we can say that's happening. Is anyone else wanting to do anything to prepare before you pass through the secret door? Oh. Knowing that you've still got about 100 feet before you um, start to make your way to there. I'll, I'll stand guard over Lyria, just because mm -hmm. that's what a paladin does. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so my, that, I would spend 10 minutes doing the ritual to, right. to cast silence. Yeah, so we'll say that's in progress, yeah. uh, just to see if anyone um, else wants And then if we want to further discuss tactics, because um, we don't know ultimately what we're mm -hmm. yeah. Do y'all have any plans or ideas of what we're about to have to deal with? Um, well, I can buff anyone within 10 feet of me, so just keep that in mind. Um, like. It's a pretty good buff. It's like um, you've got several too, right? Well, I've got plus four to saves for everyone within ten feet, okay. um, and half damage to all spell damage. All spell. Damage. I my preference is to operate in darkness. Um, so if you have a you 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 you're ranged, right? Um, melee and ranged. Melee, and ranged. <coughs> depending on yeah. So sort of very. Liam, are you ranged? Hmm? Are you ranged or are you melee? Melee. It's, it's a tank. Yeah, oh yeah, that makes sense. Ah, <laughs> uh, cool. I mean, it's not my only great sword, but you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so I, I'm going to uh, avoid being around people with light. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I can light up my sword as well, but I don't have to. So. I will be mm. at a disadvantage. Are you, are you dis you're actually disadvantaged in no, light? No, yeah. well, my advantage is so great in darkness okay. that okay. I can admit, like, it's such a significant... So I think my, it's like, it. I think if... Ours is probably the same, and it's like light up to 40 feet, I think. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, so. Yeah, Amorous will just be at the back somewhere. Yeah, it's pretty so cool. This is this is the shooting shoot cool. arrows. Cool. I'm nah. just going to wait on it. What, what, is, what is your darkness? Like, how do you see in darkness? 60 feet. Just like, how do you see in. Like, what's sort of yeah, yeah, like, your intimidation? You have something special, though, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, can you pierce it's be hard to intimidate? Darkness? No, so like it's... only freaking one class yeah. can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like low intelligence should give you a bonus to things like Imagine that. that yeah. Just, just too yeah. stupid to realize you're being intimidated. <laughs> yeah, which is why I don't have to do that. Yeah, sure. but yeah. Okay. Um, do, does anyone have like pass without address or something so, so we can sneak up? Um, otherwise, it'll be like open the door, start. Start firing. Well, <laughs> we've got this. We've got this whole corridor to come down here. Yeah. And that was like, there was a there was a terrace. Job. So ter so they can't really yeah. get to oh, us oh, up here. That represents the actual corridor. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was just like, <laughs> I'm Matt, and I'll just chuck some books. Up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That wall Matt, on Matt that has, side Matt has is, done a really good yeah, job. Does right? go up, but uh, and even yeah, this part here. This is a wall that goes up there. So, so yeah, you can walk yeah. here, here, can, and then there. I can fully see it now. Like cool. I, before, I just didn't understand. Yeah. Um, cool. So I guess we will try and sneak up and get as close as possible. Is it is it like reasonable to jump from here? It's a twenty foot jump, which uh, in D and D does two d six damage yeah. to you, unless you've got something like feather fall or. Uh... And also. I can make it, you can hang off the edge and lower yourself down, um, and I'll, I'll just give you a... Um, you no, that's yours. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure, I totally do yeah. So I'll say in darkness, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I'll I have say... Something similar, but not the same. Mm. I'll say you can lower yourself down and like hang off and let go, and I'll get a 
acrobatics check, and if you fail that, you'll take one d six damage okay. from an ankle sprain. Yeah. If you do need to do darkness and melee, I can actually fight in darkness. I've got blind sight. Okay. So. Oh, all these heroes are telling each other what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can fight with my eyes closed. Don't I have a hundred hit points. <laughs> <laughs> I can shoot things from two hundred feet off. <laughs> Old turns like I can hit things with sex. <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering if me and you come and we try and lower ourselves down while the other two move up. Mm-hmm. And then we can like ready attacks for it just in case anything comes off and then we can maybe like send like a signal to one another as in we're ready to go and try and launch everything at the same time. Uh, if, if sneaking works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I, none of you picked up pass without a trace. Um, which was a problem. And a lot of you in I plate armor. I almost did, but I didn't. Yeah. yeah. Um, can I borrow some dice? Yep. Okay. So I guess we'll just normal sneak. <laughs> At least somebody's got to meet them any quick spells. Yeah. Okay. At disadvantage for some of you as well, right? Yes. I, uh, <laughs> I, can, I can actually just tell myself that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. oh, yes. <laughs> and you've been very honest. You've told them this. You've, you've told them the story of yeah. how you last time just I accidentally and, killed someone. Yeah, let's hope it happens again. <laughs> um, but I think I should make an investigation check for the stairs. Okay. Um, we'll we'll hold off until we. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can anyone, Basically, can specifically my character. Can anyone run bless? <laughs> yes, I can run bless, but it's probably not What's ideal for me because I will lose <coughs> concentration eventually. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I can yeah. certainly bless. Yeah. Um, yeah. Before the battle starts, I'll do something to you as well. Give me buff. I'm probably the biggest risk to the group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is him just telling you this story. <laughs> yeah. Just because the general idea is just being reckless. Yeah. Are uh, you know, as in attacks and everything? Uh, not necessarily. Because <laughs> I, I was thinking I would probably ask them where the giants are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, good idea. Is, uh, is yeah. anybody is anybody fighting with a non magic weapon? Uh, Mine's magic. No, you got the uh, plain great sword of sharpness counts as magic. Yeah. Are you dual welded? I don't think I can. Dual oh, welded great swords. I just, I just switch between them as necessary. Oh, I see. I got it. Well, hey. one of you's got the strength probably to do it. I mean, I've, I mean, I've got the strength to do it, but I'm like, I've got my shield. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, right, how much so strength do you need to? Oh, I have no idea. You, you can't do work right Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah they don't get together. Yeah. Just as in terms of being seven foot, there's not uh, enough leverage and stuff. Almost say we might just walk up together as a group. <laughs> <laughs> just just do a do a dramatic stride yeah. up the corridor. Uh, actually, yeah. Yeah. actually, um, is this is this like is this like a is this like a barrier or a wall? Like no, I this is, is it just a drop? Okay, yeah. how how big is the space here? Um, there's no wall there. It just goes. No, how high? Oh, okay. So the whole thing goes thirty feet high. Yeah. Um. So that would be another ten feet ten high. Ten feet. Yeah. Cool. So what you're saying is. Be so careful with what, I'm saying. what you what you're saying <laughs> is that we could line up here, mm-hmm. take a couple of steps back and not get hit. Uh yeah, that could be a tactic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I feel like that look means he considered that already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep in mind or say, yeah, that most frost giants are twenty feet tall. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. they're just gonna come in with their <laughs> bladed <laughs> arms. Reach down the corridor. <laughs> <laughs> But also, yeah, you've been described some of their abilities as well. Yeah, that yeah. might suggest. Uh, but but it is perchable, like yeah, completely. Yeah, yeah, attacking. you can fight along there. It yeah. would give you yeah. advantage in certain situations, as Jake says. You can sort of shoot and duck back. Um, there is to counter that. It happened to me once in D and D because um, old Tim tried that in that. Remember that um, tent that we had, where you could in the. Guys drove up in their car, and I thought I'd just yeah, yeah. jump, jump out, shoot, jump back in, yeah, and I, I thought I'd keep doing that. And Ben or Ben did was hold his action to wait for me to appear, yeah. and then I appeared, and like twenty people shot me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Yeah. 
Alright, um, I guess we'll walk up. <laughs> okay, so the silent spell is cast. The yeah, door, but at the door, at, yeah, just yeah. at the door. So doorway. that swings. And what you first um, notice, because you still remember how Trimlane described them that last time there were torches all lit along the wall here, but they were all out. It's a dark corridor. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the Black Wings probably lit it for when they were here, but um, now it's just a totally dark corridor that disappears into darkness. Though there is a soft light, almost can't, not like a firelight or anything like that, almost like a soft blue um, dusk but very, very faint coming at the end here, at the end of the tunnel. Um, <clears throat> I have some ideas. This guy's self is a giant. Oh, I'm just a giant. <laughs> I'm the <laughs> fourth champion. Uh, just got resurrected. Feels good. So what are we doing? <laughs> I'm Tusker Hull. Tusker Hull is I was the eighth one. Yeah, there was totally eight of us. Yeah. <laughs> All of us in a trench coat. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Scooby doing it. He's uh, lying on a. He's a husk. It's also terrifying. Yeah. I mean, I'm game to walk in. Yeah, I mean, like, we don't have any other options. Uh, Unless we wanted to fight on that list. So, well, well I mean, I mean, I mean, the people, the like, if you guys want from? to stay back, yeah. sort of, it's no, just in this, well. general, yeah, you'd get that idea. As, yeah. you're like, so as we, there will be like, yeah, just some to, to the side of yeah, the corridor yeah. coming. But beyond yeah. that, there is no other light source. No, no. Okay. So this is like pretty. This is all darkness. Yeah. This uh, is all darkness. Yes. We don't know what's down here. <laughs> <laughs> so much <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true, true. <laughs> okay. I mean, as far as I know, I've still got my sword alive, yeah. sir. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, someone might want to talk to Lady Gold, who's <laughs> holding up his flaming sword <laughs> in the dark, dark corridor. Um, what I might do is I'll go to the edge and um, I'll use rope trick. Mm-hmm. And so that'll summon the portal and the, yeah. rope, the rope's 60 feet long so it'll it'll be enough to take us from the top to the bottom right. and leave that as a permanent like climbing area okay. and then yeah. a little safety hatch I guess yeah, yeah. I go to Lubnob and say hey save your light until we're until we're swinging the swords <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> um, and I explain to everyone like there's now a rope that just disappears up into a hole um, <clears> and okay worst case so hold on you're, 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 you're casting a spell into this area yeah should we <laughs> maybe wait a moment and then make sure that's the well, light? They're still like 60 feet. Are they in a him? Yeah, I would. Well, <laughs> I'll describe the scene to you when yeah. you get there as well. Because, um, yeah, at the moment, say you, you... Okay, well, say we've walked forward up into that, like, the, okay. the yellow book. Do we need to do, like, a... St- how, at what point do we need to do, like, a stealth check or, like, a, to remain silent? Yeah, so what I'm going to tell you is... As you say, <coughs> say you do move as silently as you can. Yeah. Um, are any of you good at stealth? No, <laughs> I'm not bad at stealth. I mean, I'm okay. But you'd have disadvantage. Right? No, because I got mithril armor. <coughs> ah, I would have disadvantage because I'm in full play. I'm plus eight. Plus guess. eight, and you're in leather, right? Yeah. And what are you? Plus three. Plus three. So yeah, old Emery's is is pretty stealthy. We can say maybe you take point yeah. and uh, scout ahead and and the others line up along this. I would this definitely wall. want to be be the person in the back, but yeah. I don't have no need to be a loud, obnoxious in front. Cool, cool. So yeah. let me just describe what you guys see. Way bad. Okay, so We'll say, yeah, you come up almost to the lip and you can even almost crawl to the lip and look over. Um, What you see here, this is a huge frost giant wearing a white cloak of ice. But his head's bowed and he's sort of just just like this. Um, Almost in sort of a standing slumber. (laughs) (laughs) Ooh, there's ghosts. This is the Halloween ghost costume. <laughs> yeah. You see that you can see just make out this. This is a 
um, 10 foot tall stone, heavily carved with um, rough ruins that um, softly, almost, <laughs> almost you can't make out, but they're softly glowing um, and almost pulsing. Um, and what strikes you at the back here, this, is actually a massive pillar of ice that just shoots up, it's wonky and curls and twists and there's just runes all the way carved up it. Um, massive rough cut runes hacked into the ice as it twists and turns to the ceiling. And, and yeah, even looking at it almost hurts the eyes as it shifts slightly under your gaze and uh, gives a slight headache as you look at it. Does it look like the runes have been recently cut? Um, it's hard to tell with ice, yeah. but um, they're very clear, very clean, but the ice itself does look almost like that old pitted frost rime mm. ice like that's been left in the fridge too long. Um, so there's yeah. no shavings down the bottom? Right? No, okay. no, nothing like that. Um, yeah, and as you look over the edge and take that in, you are hit by how cold it is down here. Now, what I'm going to say is you've all got rings of warmth, mm -hmm. um, but you've got the standard traveller ring of warmth because I think you've got a ring of warmth as one of your magic items. Ha. Huh. Well, I went with the boots. Yeah, I've got boots. And I tried to do like fine clothing to simulate the warmer one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what do the boots do? Negative 100 Fahrenheit. Oh, cool. And do they give you... Uh, resistance to cold damage? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 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 um. Is that right? Cool. I just got a normal one. Resistance to cold damage, <laughs> yeah. ignore difficult terrain created by ice or snow. Oh, cool. So I'll say you three get the resistance to cold damage, but you've just got one that keeps you warm in the wild so you don't get the cold damage resistance because you guys spend a magic item to, to have it. Is it too late to change that? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, we'll say it is. You still get cold resistance, which mm. is going to play a part in this. Um, and it's, it's important. I know I haven't been maxed enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so from here you can see the one in the white, <laughs> he's brilliant, white cloak, as I say, just head bowed, almost standing, sleeping. Way back here, this one will be in the cloak of chains, um, with, and snaking around his arms are two just long chains that hit the floor and seem to just disappear off into the distance. And it's standing there, huge, broad, uh, I don't just, like this at all. just <laughs> slumbering. You can't see the other one yet, but you know old Mother Marrow is in there somewhere too. And yeah, you take this in. At the moment, you're thinking, we haven't disturbed them. They've probably been here for at least 50 years, um, ever since their souls were sent to these um, bodies. These are all mummified husks that lay across 10 foot high sarcophaguses. Sarcophagi? Um, yeah, of the other four champions that have not had their souls sent to these bodies. You also, Trimlane filled you on a bit of laws. These were probably not the bodies of the actual champions, because the champions fell in battle. These are probably other bodies that have been placed here to re receive the souls mm. for the are resurrection. They, are they wrapped in some kind of cloth or something? Uh, they just, it's hard to tell from here, they're not wrapped in cloth, but you can make out, you know when you see a, um, an old dried up corpse, that's, yeah. and yeah, you can almost make the rib cages out, it's all leathery, brown leather um, skin and, and stuff like that. Almost seeing the skulls through dried skin things like that. And yeah, behind them is a huge uh, frost giant. Same thing, um, but you know the body of Huskatoll was never found, so this could well be his body. I am scared. Are we ready? Doing it? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yep. Where's your character at, Liam? Which um, one is yours? Liam, do you want to be that dude with the stuff? Yeah, no, I figured he was an appropriate size. Yeah, I <laughs> tried to pick someone big. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk down the stairs. Um, I, yeah, I still want to do rope trick at the end here. Yeah, you want to slap? Yeah, cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to draw attention if you want me to kick this off. You um, can make your stealth roll. Oh, we can do a stealth roll. Yeah, if you want to see, it's, it's unnerving as you're 
you, you can't tell if this guy is just in a permanent deep slumber. Uh, 19. I, I have, a, I have a, a kind of a question for my character. Mm -hmm. Could my character have learned a corking ritual to carry along his accursed soul, his accursed specter? The from when you kill someone, you yeah, yeah. Of, yeah, well, as I said in your backstory, you've noticed that when you uh, kill people, you've laid claim to their soul uh, rather than the bone lord being able to claim it as he has. He has. So, yeah, we can say um, that, yeah, one of them you've kept with you. Maybe one of them um, was killed in Wildgate, a great adventure in their own right, and they asked you to okay. stay on, mm -hmm. to, to carry on fighting the bat. Then I'll, have, I'll, I'll bring yeah. my spectre along. Um, I might cast protection on, from good and evil on um, Lab Gold. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, let's uh, let a tiny little bit of water out of my pouch and throw it on his face. <laughs> <laughs> and just be like, hey, yeah, watch out for those undead, bang. Yeah. So you have no well, idea of the thirsty. god that gives you favors, basically. No idea. Yeah. Yeah, you just know someone's watching yeah, over someone's you. Someone's watching me and they give me some favors every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, I throw some water in your face. <laughs> for, the next, for the next 10 minutes, um, you've got undead have disadvantage on tax rolls against you. Uh, and um, you can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed. Wow, that's actually great. That's <laughs> really good, actually. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I get you. So, um, yeah, you need to keep it. So you got plus two to your armor class. Yeah. And yeah, keep a try keeping a memory of that. Are within thirty feet? Are oh, you a comedian? Oh, I'm oh the, the married couple have to yeah. be within thirty feet. Yeah. yeah oh, the one with the married. flaming sword and the one that lights dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a match made in heaven. Yeah. yeah. Daryl, just so you know, you've got to be within 30 feet to get the plus AC for the marriage. Oh, oh, at all times? Yeah. So if we separate and we lose it, if we're together, we have it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's, yeah. Our bond makes us stronger. Yeah. Oh, so his flaming <laughs> sword apparently has a radius of 40 feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's, no, that's fine. I mean, that, yeah, yeah, no. that's okay. I've got another sword. Oh, yes. Uh, no, 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 no. Use the flaming one. <laughs> yeah, use the flaming one. I'm just not going to be near you. <laughs> My character is not designed to be near people. <laughs> <laughs> introvert. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Um, Theron, we're going to say you move very quietly. Your mithril armor doesn't make a noise. Um, there's some magic behind that. Mithril. And you get to the base of the stairs. And yeah, you can take all the scene in. And you can now hear the deep breathing of these as though they are in just a deep slumber. They've been here 30 to 50 years, never had to deal with intruders until the Blackwing Reavers came in. Yep. Um, you get the feeling that they're not expecting an attack. Yeah. Or to see anyone in these, in these chambers. Are you doing anything or are you staying up there? I mean, about... obviously, I'm going to go straight to the action. Yeah, because I'm about to kick the thought, man. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I also want to say one thing, too. From um, Gunther's speech, uh, and you, you four heroes uniting to do, you know, something good, this is huge for you to see Huskatel, the uh, warlord on the, within sight, and finally to um, take out what could be a resurgence of the Frost Giants. You each get an inspiration point. Um, so for me, that means you can re-roll one attack die, saving throw, or ability check. So best AD 20? Um, or if you get a really bad roll, mm -hmm. you can re-roll it once. So it's an advantage, basically. Yeah, I've yeah. got inspiration tokens. <laughs> yeah, but you can, only, cheat too. Yeah. <laughs> you can only use it once yeah. for, for advantage, so basically. So we us in half when we use it? Got it. Yeah. yeah, cool. All right. And Step the, into any roll. I right, ignore, ignore that. Okay. It's just to remind you that you've got something to use. Okay. Yeah. Okay, as Lud Gob comes marching down, True to character, let's get a stealth check at disadvantage um, to see if anything horribly goes wrong. They are deeply sleeping. They are deeply sleeping. So. Hold on, hold on. <clears throat> so they're deeply sleeping and we... Okay, go ahead and do your stealth roll. I'd like to do something too, maybe. Can, can we just, like, do you want to do something? Because well, we, if we can do, we can hold our actions. Yeah. Um, and if we sense stirring, do something. Well, um... 
I could possibly cast a spell that. Oh yeah, because you've got the silence again, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, if we have, if we could, if we're not going, if they're sleeping, I could potentially cast a ritual on them from here. <laughs> this is true. Um, but I would like he's already. I'm very comfortable with him going ahead and re- yeah. doing his movement if that's where we're already like yeah. committed to. No, I feel he's just following Theron, but if you see him starting to move off. You might be like, oh, okay, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess I'm, I guess. What's your ritual? Just tell us. Well, that's. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey. What? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what? what? Yeah, I, I actually would like to cast, I would like to, if, if I could do a 10 minute ritual in silence, directly targeting the first person, that would be mine. What's the ritual? Silence. Oh, the ritual yeah. is silence. And what's the radius of it? 120 uh, feet. Oh, that's the range. Range. Oh, uh, how much area does it cover? Just 20 feet. Radius? So, uh, 20 foot radius. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so 40, that's a, great. That's a great area. So it would, I would just do it like, you know, I guess whatever there. Yeah. yeah. But so the sound entering in the radius doesn't count? Yeah. yeah. How does this work? Um, I've never they're deafened. Yeah, yeah they're any deafened. creatures are deafened while entirely inside it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so they won't hear you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's say that once again, um, you take the 10 minute ritual. We'll say they called you back, Theron. Um, well, I was, I was pretty stealthy. I had a 19, so yeah, I was just yeah. kind of like getting a bit just moving back and forth. Like. <laughs> yeah. I would just be like, love, go, hold, stop, don't move, silent. You know, and, mm-hmm. and, I, would, and I would just. Um, yeah. Just go into my 10 minute ritual. The ten, as the 10 minute ritual comes to an end, Theron will say you're still there, mm-hmm. half kneeled watching this thing. It, it becomes quite weird at some point, even though you hear this heavy breathing, almost snoring coming from it, at some point it just goes mm. and stops. And that whole front of the chamber falls silent. So. We're doing it. I mean, my character is just like, is he good? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Starts <laughs> doing CPR. <laughs> just gonna, just gonna walk out in front of him. Okay. Are you gonna? Let's go get in your positions. Just like sword out on the shoulder and just. Um, I might still do that thing, the rope trick. I thought you'd done it. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do it. So yeah. rope trick up here. And yeah, yeah. We can just go up and down here. Now. Yeah. So it gives you another way of getting out. Otherwise, you have to somehow Would, get up a twenty foot. Yeah. Is that the one that has? Would the I know for certain the if yeah. these are undead or not? Um, actually, that's a really good point because of who you are. You, there's two things you notice. First, these these two stones here, uh-huh. the deodorants, um, they're. You recognise the runes from the scribbles in your book and the and the and the drawings, and you also recognise that these are the dampeners that are muffling the um, bone lord's call in here, and this is why these husks haven't haven't moved or been pulled out of the the tomb. Mm-hmm. But the three standing and slumbering are very much living, alive. They've been. Resurrected, basically, all um, back alive. So, resurrected is not the same as reanimated. No, okay. yeah, basically living again. And they're not the undead creature type. Yeah, yeah. So they're not. Yeah, they're not the undead creature type. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would be able to determine that. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and okay. yeah, yeah, you detect these four and Huskatal. They're dead. They're just husks. Yeah, like they're attitude. just yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that the bone lord. Has been the call has been coming through, but it comes through this filter that these ward stones have placed, which interests you greatly because you know it's some arcana. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what you're hearing from the bone lord is this muffled mess that makes no sense. So it's not calling the it's, dead from yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, cool. I'm, I'm with you. I was about to. Cut, I was just. I was going to get really fixated on the undead bit. Was yeah. 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 Yeah, you know, you know, you're dealing with three living champions of Huskatal. Um, I'm going to follow in the footpath and rope down. Rope down. Yeah, I don't know how much movement, but I would like to like. Ah, uh, you get as much movement as you want. We're just preparing, so. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. and then the yeah, phase shifting specter. Wait, is that both of both of those are you? Huh? 
Yeah, this is a face. This is my specter. Okay. Yeah, one of the dead from Wildgate that want vengeance. Cool. Yeah. And Ludgob, <laughs> you don't need to make a stealth roll now. Um, well, let's do it at disadvantage. If you roll a one, you fall down, clattering down the stairs, and uh, <laughs> you might wake up the two in the back. <laughs> okay. Not a one. That's okay. good. <laughs> Got to roll again. Not a one. Good. Like a gazelle. <laughs> <laughs> You descend down the stairs. Yeah. Well, everyone else hears clank, 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 clank. Yeah. But yeah, you find your way next to, standing next to Theron. <clears throat> Do you guys want to see where you are in the initiative? We're going to treat it as a surprise round. Um, and so you get a round of attacks, and then we go into the next round, and wherever you sit in the initiative, as the frost giants will awaken from their slumber determines <coughs> where you attack. So we get a surprise, so that would be movement action bonus? <coughs> yeah. Okay. And I'll roll, roll for the... Um, we're doing... Oh, nice. With my high plus and my extra plus, I'm still only 15. Can you just, like, forego your initiative and go last? Seven. Yeah, you can. Uh, is that a, I mean, just a, is that a thing that you're able to do? I don't know. Um, yeah, a, I reckon you can. You can choose to fail like saves and stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. So no, I'd be quite happy if you want to move yourself to the bottom of the in the yeah, order. I'd like to move myself to the bottom of the order. Huh. I do have two weapon fighting. Yeah, great swords are a bit big. Yeah. And I'd highly suggest not attacking the first guy, or a, a, or busting his bubble of silence. But like, oh, that's a really good point. If we attack someone behind him, he's gonna knock him on the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So what initiatives have we got? Uh, I got twenty. I got seven. I was fifteen. So you, why don't we want to attack that guy? He's asleep and he's in silence for an hour. There's a chance or he could be minutes. fighting other people and he might not. He will not be aware. But if, but if we're all in the silent bubble. We don't, no, don't go in his bubble. Why not? We don't need to. But if we're all in his bubble and beating on him, uh-huh. no it's one's going to hear it. Oh, right. Outside uh-huh. the bubble. Yeah, yeah. This is <laughs> That's another true. option. Yeah, and he, well, he can't cast a spell. So if someone wants to get in there and grapple him, get in there and grapple him. Grapple a giant? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I probably could. Yeah, <laughs> yeah unfortunately there is... Uh, but, I'm certainly willing to try. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, there is a rule that you can only grapple one size above you, right. and giants are oh, two yeah. sizes. Sizes, yeah, yeah. yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Spread the league. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> I considered that, since yeah. someone did take the grappler feed yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Once he's awake, though, he's awake. Once you're in that bubble and, yeah. Yeah. And so we're going to say you were the bottom of the initiative. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm happy for anyone else to kick this off, but I'm just like, you know, I'm yeah. just right yeah. up there. Initiative-wise, it's you, there in that. Yeah. First in the surprise yeah. round. Yeah. Well, he's going to wake up, and if he wants to cast a spell, he's going to realize he can't cast a spell. Right. I mean, we have to kill somebody first. Yeah. So it might as well be this guy, right? Mm. Um, we can't really get past them into the rest of the room. Yeah. yeah. Because then he'll be, you guys will be vulnerable. I'm not vulnerable. You can't see me. <laughs> yeah, for all intents and purposes, he's already invisible. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I'm confused about what our strategy is then. Yeah, well, Theron, you're probably going to have to just make the Yeah, call. yeah. <clears throat> I say go, go for it. Attack. All right. It's either you or... I guess we just, you know, the advantage is it's going to wake up and it can't cast a spell. <laughs> well, it can, it can cast anything without verbal components. <laughs> well, isn't that... I guess there are, yeah. There are a few that don't. Yeah, there yeah. are a few. Um, Wish he's got, like, what, meta magic from the silence. <laughs> Matt's like, he's got it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so we can see that now, all right? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can see Lady Marrow. Uh, let me describe each of them to you as well, because they each I look a I certain way. I could have silenced the back one as well instead of the front one. Huh. 
Okay, I'm going to describe each of them. The front one. A huge, brutish man covered in a layer of thick white hair. His cloak is made of many white bear pouts and is covered in another thick layer of frost, which crumbles and reforms at his every breath. And he's just a brutish man standing there, sleeping. But yeah, every time he breathes, a bit of frost crumbles to the floor and then reforms all over him. The one to the right, the tra chain dragger. He's tall and imposing. His long hair and beard are slate grey, matching the frosted pitted chains that cover him like a cloak. Two long chains snake down the knotted, his knotted arms and dra drag far behind him. And old mother Marrow. This is just so you know who you're dealing with, and that's the lady in the corner there. She's stooped and haggard, a stooped and haggard looking giantess with long white hair. Half her face and right arm has fallen away to bone. A heavy, sickly green mist cascades off the exposed skin. She wears a cloak of old yellow bones. Her exposed teeth are set in a permanent half skull grin. Right. Are they awake? No, they all are slumbering. Deep slumber. Oh, I'm going to just walk right up into melee range mm -hmm. with them. And then, like, kind of starts to say something <laughs> as dramatic. <laughs> Gets drowned out. And it's just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your attacks are going to be an advantage. Cool. Um, for this round. Uh, the oh, first okay. one is a nat 20. So that's going to be double damage. Can I, um, what happens if you put a smite on a critical hit? Does you the, get double damage on your smite as yeah. well. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah, okay, um, third level divine smite. Isma, the white bear, no. Um, He's got so cool stuff to use. Third, that's Is it a 10d6 on a smite, smite then? No, it's a 10d6. 10d6. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice, but it's not. Um, hang on, I need to find it. because I've thought it was played pretty high. Anymore. Didn't George count? Did it's 2d8. Yeah. 48, 48, 48, and it's not undead, so it's 48. 48 times 2. 48 times 2 for the Divine Smite. Oh, um, not exclusively Divine So smite. I'll do the, I'll do the, uh, the, oh, it's, I haven't actually ignited my Flame Tongue's Longsword, so it's just a regular attack, but um, that is... No, you can ignite it. You would have ignited it, wouldn't you? Sure, okay. Yeah. Um, so that's 12, 7, 19 for the... Attack. Oh, what spell slot did you use for your divine spell? Third. Third. Uh, so that's 19 for the weapon. Um, Keep a note. Um, 19. 10 plus 20. Um, that's 40 for the divine smite. So 59 in total. So. And 10. Do I double that too? Yeah, any dice you double. So 20 extra fire damage. So, so 79. Yes. <laughs> Bloody hell. Yeah. Um, and I'll make my second attack. But that's a smite. Yeah, that's a smite. Yeah. 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 I feel like I'm going to be incredibly <laughs> underwhelming. Oh, <laughs> so I just got another nat 20. <laughs> <laughs> These are my, this is my brand new nat, nat 20, so that's very nice. Um, yeah, you just bought these dice? Yeah, yeah. Just printed them by any chance? No. <laughs> um, eight. So that's... Fifteen. Are you gonna pour a, a divine? Spell? I don't think I can do it more than once a turn. Oh, okay, so fifteen total. Mm -hmm. right, so. Oh wait, two d six. You can plus blow, another eighteen. You can damage. blow all your divine smites on one attack. Times, I'm yes. not mistaken. You can only do a you can do a divine smite on one attack, and it uses a spell slot. Yeah. Um, I thought you could use multiple divine slot. Smites and multiple spell slots. I don't think so. That's fine. Yeah. That, no, that sounds incredibly <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I so use all of my spell slots. And it's, like, <laughs> yeah. and it's, and it's got like a maximum of 68 damage, yeah, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. So, sorry, you did 15 and 19 yes. on that. So, that's 30, another 34. Yep. Holy crap. So, that's over a How's, how's yeah. the frost giant looking? I mean, that's a good yeah. way to start, right? Two nat 20s. Hang on, yeah, I'll just figure great. out the damage and tell you how it looks. <laughs> yeah, two nat 20s. <laughs> I don't know what to 
Yeah, what do you do against yeah, that? So uh, I think watch me get to that 113 damage. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. So, yeah, you see, you're quite a slightly built wood elf, right? And, yeah, you wander up, sword comes out, lights on fire, and you see him suddenly surge forward and hit this... 21 foot tall hulking brutish man covered in white fur with such a blow that it staggers the the giant and he tumbles back takes steps back falls to his knee as another the flame sword plunges in again rips a huge part of his skin out and you see his eyes start waking up as he's trying to come to but yeah bloody um and Ismat the white bear has never felt such a blow in his immortal life. Yeah. Legendary. Yeah, that felt good. Very. <laughs> you almost took out one of my <laughs> creatures on the first. Uh, yeah, it would have killed any of you guys. Uh, not quite. Not quite. <laughs> no. You're I right. would be on four health. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then we go to. Um, Emery's. Okay. Um, cool. He's gonna pull out his bow. Uh, <laughs> um, and I make one attack. Now, do we do we get advantage if we're like in darkness? Uh, yeah, and he's not moving; he's asleep, so yeah. you get advantage anyway. Oh right. Um, so is that like double advantage or? Oh, uh, you only ever get one advantage, so yeah, oh, okay. two dice, two roll twice. Uh, yeah. Twenty-eight. Yep, you hit. Uh, yep. So, so that's. Okay. I'm going to use the piercing feat to re-roll that damage. Cool, which is eight, eight plus two plus seven. So you didn't want to go seven. sharpshooter by any chance? Yeah, that was next. Ah, oh, see. <laughs> Just making sure you. I've got. You got to. You got to do one attack, and then you do the sharpshooter one. And then I get the second attack from my second multi attack. And then oh, because you got the balloon one stalker. Yeah. Ah, uh, you got a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah. So that was um, seventeen. Seventeen damage. Yeah. And then as the as part of the sharpshooter. Oh, sharpshooter is the negative ten, right? Yeah, negative negative five, but plus on ten to time. damage. Yeah. yeah. So I will, as part of the Dread Ambusher, I get a second attack mm -hmm. based on the main attack and then it does a 1d8 plus damage. So this is the thing, but I'll, can, can I combine that with Sharpshooter? Yep. Cool, so I take a penalty of minus 5. Yeah. Um, and that was a 19 plus 6. It's a hit. Um, cool, so that is 5 plus another 1d8 which is 6 so that's 11 plus oh, 5 11 12 13 um, plus 7 so 20 plus the additional 10 so that's 30 damage okay arrows bearing in his forehead staggering shaking roaring yeah. still standing Cool. Roaring silently as well. Roaring silently. <laughs> Pointing. Second attack. <laughs> um, um, so that's 22? Yep. Um, so that's 4, 5, 6, uh, 13. So that's 13 piercing. Mm hmm. Another arrow tears into his throat. And you, if you could talk, he'd be gargling. Cool. And now I'll use the War Priest ability as a bonus action to get okay. one additional attack. Oh, Jesus. Uh, nat 20? Yay! It's going to be enough, dude. Um, and so that... <laughs> I rolled max average, so 8. 8 Terry plus 2 is 10 plus 7, so 17. So if I double that, it's 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, so this is the sequence. One of these great champions that have walked the world for centuries, laid waste to armies of men. A small <laughs> elf almost eviscerates him with a flaming sword. 
and then as he staggers and <coughs> tries to get to his feet, his red eyes starting to widen and rage. Three arrows <laughs> hit him, and the huge giant falls back <laughs> and lands silently on the ground. <laughs> and Frost falls up from his cloak and settles silently on him. And the heroes walk forward. <laughs> <laughs> I gave this one so many hit points. I had 180 hit points just because I knew he's going to have to absorb most of your surprise round. And then he'd get to do his cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's the best thing? Do we need another surprise round now? <laughs> you totally will. I mean, what? Because oh, he no. was going to step out and roar and summon everyone, but no. No, you. you There's <laughs> nothing he could have done to yeah. really. Yeah, the no sound him. has been made. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so lay, lay down his mouth, the white bear, who would have raged as a giant white bear and a storm swirls around and that causes exhaustion on people within the range and it was amazing <laughs> yeah so isn't it down and as I said falls silently the ritual holding and even though one of the most probably epic moments in the heroes ever is just played on the silent stage which must look kind of weird <laughs> it's like a silent movie yeah and yeah, you can now move to wherever you want. So do we rest- will we restart the round at the top of the initiative? Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. Um, yeah so we want to take 10 minutes to cast our Oh, I know, and I, like, I was just about to do that. Like, well. and I feel that's like, because that's, that's exactly what Elro would do. Like. <laughs> hey, I'm not going to stop you. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, where does the light kind of end here? Because you said there was a dim light. It's there. coming from those two ward stones that are slowly pulsing blue. So and, it's and, a, and a flaming sword, bro. Yeah. So mm. if I was to like stand around here, two mm-hmm. yeah, swords, if the sword wasn't there, would I be in darkness? Or? Yeah. Darkness is going to end at some point, okay. right? Yeah. 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 So it's more filling the chamber and outside it yeah. fades quickly into darkness. Cool. It's not a strong light. Uh, yeah, and this little area in front of you is... Uh, Silent. Um, I'll start to cast another ritual of silence on the chain person. Are we really going to wait 10 minutes? <laughs> well, it makes sense. Is and the, so it worked. Is the ritual somatic? It's verbal only. Right, so you'll be talking. Yeah, I would be talking mm. at that range. Yeah. yeah, let's give them a small chance here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean... It's yeah, not like you have to yell or anything, and you've got 120 <laughs> feet to cast it. I'm just gonna. I'm actually just gonna climb up onto the body and just stand on the head. Yeah, yeah. One foot on it. Yeah. Well, I've definitely moved closer to get a uh, line of sight. You pass me my back. <laughs> I've moved yeah. as close to gain line of sight. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do I need to roll a stealth check? Let's. If you roll, I'm gonna give you advantage. No. Not advantage because you're in, I'm in play. play. So yeah, if you roll a one, uh, yeah, something, a whisper in the wind carries and and wakes wakes them. But even then, you've got your inspiration. If you to roll right well, from the two. <laughs> so what? a stealth at disadvantage? Uh, no, no, just um, just roll a d twenty and we'll okay. because yeah, it'll be. They've got disadvantage on their perception perceptions yeah. at the moment because they're sleeping as well. So it's just a straight. Oh, two. You're older too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You find yourself talking a bit louder than you thought, and then you just ring it down, and uh, yeah, silence on who? The chain. Um, chain dragger. Chain dragger. Okay, and again, the breathing that was heavy, the slight rattle of chains, the clinking of his cloak, suddenly just. Um, the protection is off you now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's run out. Wait, yeah. protection? The, 20, uh, the, the ceremony uh, for no, marriage? No, 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 or no, protection? No, protection. At, this oh, rate, oh, at this rate, you're not yeah, going yeah, 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 yeah. to need it. <laughs> <laughs> so who did you cast it on? The, the, that one, yeah. Yep. I don't know how to... Could it? Does it have any chains? No. Oh, and one other thing. Actually... This might change it. Sorry, guys. Yeah, no. um, before the ritual starts, 
he is going to make an, a, a perception check because as that frost giant f- fell and died, one of those stones cracks and it's a loud crack. It just cracks and <clears throat> the Bone Lord's call isn't quite as muffled anymore. So oh. I'm just going to roll oh. perception at disadvantage. Was it when he hit the ground that it made it crack? No. Okay. It was the death blow. Yep. As soon as the death blow hit, the rock cracked. He rolls a natural so, one, so he doesn't. Right. <laughs> so maybe I don't want to cast my ritual anymore, but can I have a moment to maybe cast something else? Sure. It, all right. Um... So this isn't silenced anymore, this spot? That, uh, that area should still be silenced. Yeah, until he decides to. So how, long, how long does silence last? An hour. Ten minutes. Oh, and I have to maintain concentration on that silence spell. So if I cast another silence, yeah. it will yeah. just move. And Which you, is all right. I mean, yes. Trimline told us what these things were? No, they... Uh, they were okay. Yeah, yeah, they didn't... So I've got no... Yeah. Where but, um, we can have some of you make arcana checks to see like Illyria noticed noted that they were the things that were muffling the call of the bone lord so that's what was keeping the undead here from answering the bone lord's yep. call um, but yeah if you want to give me an arcana check you might be able to figure out more information sure. uh, 16 yep it was over 15 um, yeah you now feel like these were a ritual as well and were tied to the life force of the three standing champions so to protect, the, to protect uh, their <clears throat> warlord from um, the bone lord's call do i get the sense that this body that i'm standing on might get back up again uh if if these three if these ward stones are shattered right uh yeah they might answer the bone lord's call as well but there is uh, cast start the ritual spell of gentle repose. Ah, that'll do it. Yes. Oh, right. uh, I was going to say, you remember that what you kill stays dead. Yeah, um, yeah. So you haven't been abandoned by the Raven Queen, basically. And when you cast this gentle repose as a ritual, you pass the soul basically onto her taking. Um, and the Bone Lord doesn't dare step into the realm yet of another god and, and claim their domain. So, yeah, you hear a slight rustle of feathers, the squawking of a raven. Have you got your raven familiar with? Yeah, yeah. I, I, would, I would ideally be having the raven just with me. Yeah. Maybe on the shoulder or... Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's a strange, strange bird on your shoulder. We'll say it even every now and then mimics a person's voice. And as you cast that, um, it says, The soul is ours. Well done. <laughs> and, uh, and, yeah, you can just see it settle into a peaceful rest. All right. Right, number two. <laughs> so we didn't cast silence on him. No. And no. we're not stealth. I changed the mind. I changed that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I don't want to... Once, I guess, Matt... Yeah. That Sorry. changes how things... Um, so we, so whoever we're going to attack is going to yeah. trigger them both. Yeah. And it's my turn, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're still on surprise... We're on the top of the surprise round now. Yeah. And the silence has fallen <laughs> off the... S- the uh, yeah. as you basically claimed the soul for the Raven Queen to pass on to a natural death. Go for the pestilence one. I don't really want to move right over there. Um, so when I pulled my flaming sword out of the head of this guy, because I was just making sure he was dead. Um, <laughs> yeah, as as uh, 
Jack Ryan's character he tries to pass it into a peaceful sleep. Yeah. You're stabbing it with a flaming sword. And oh, it's just like, you know, <laughs> yeah. or, you know, just like, shh, 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 Yeah, like, passes yeah. through like yeah. hot knife through butter. Yeah. Um, I, is everybody else where they want to be? <clears throat> yeah. Position wise? Cool. I'm just going to um, wing a um, sacred. Actually, no. No? No, hold tight. I would like to, um, I would like for you to not attack. Okay. I want to... Uh, Are you going to tell me this while we're standing in a cone yeah. of silence? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, I thought it dissipated. Yeah, because of the yeah. general repose yeah. was constant. Oh, okay. I want to cast Magic Circle in a reverse, but I don't think it'd be big enough to be all over Tus- Tusker Tool. Would it? Uh, how big is the Magic Circle? And that's also another ritual, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, is it? A, yeah, it might be. No, it's a uh, spell. Yeah, you it's, could. It's, well, all, yeah. all of your ritual spells you cast. Oh, uh, not no, yeah. not the world. But it's uh, a spell. twenty foot radius, twenty foot tall cylinder. Yeah, that'll that'll take him because uh, that's like forty feet. Yeah. So could I cast? Radius. Could I cast a magic circle on mm. on him? Yeah. Well, what? Hold on. Wouldn't it be better for you just to sneak up to Huskatol and do general pose? Oh. Well. I guess so, actually, now that you see that. <laughs> it's like the worst movie ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ten minutes, guys. Uh, oh, that's ten yeah. Cents. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the magic circle is an instant cast. Yeah. Um, but no, you can take rituals. I'm, I'm just joking. Uh, this is you guys being exceptionally smart. Well, and there's I, a powder keg in here. Yeah. yeah you've yeah. got... Uh, I would... If y'all can spare the ten minutes and hold your bloodthirst, <laughs> I would like to... Um, General repose on the Husker Toll. Okay. I mean, you'd have to get over to him, right? Yeah. So you're gonna sneak up there, in your uh, in your plate armor. Uh. You just keep casting silence where you are. <laughs> like moving minutes. forward. No, I, can, I can. I can teleport. Five hours later. <laughs> yeah. I can teleport. We would have taken a long. I can, oh, yeah. I can <laughs> teleport. I can teleport right. thirty feet. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Could I teleport twice? Use two yeah. of my teleports? Yeah. With that, yeah. So can I teleport twice? Cool, so I say you just wrap yourself in shadow and you see <coughs> Illyria just sort of appear. How far? 20 feet? 30, 30 feet. And then 30, 30 feet. feet. And then again, and appears beside the huge form of Husker Toll, this desiccated, very skinny and lean looking, because it's almost bone. Uh, frost giant spread across uh, almost 30 feet of the race of cockroaches. Old Emerus will just summon some good berries and start to make sure. Easy as Java, really. <laughs> oh, yeah, Gunther was also paying you a thousand gold each for this. Nice. Sorry, I didn't mention the contract, but good <laughs> money to be paid. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and. And yeah, my Spectre came with me just as a. What's up, boss? <laughs> yeah. And as the ritual finishes, you see the this long desiccated form of Huskatal just crumble to dust. And obviously something was keeping the form there. Um, the, the, the promise of potentially coming back. But now that that's been taken away and his soul and body have been passed on to the Raven Queen, it crumbles to dust. And not, <laughs> not to ruin anything, but like, we should just bounce. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they've got no job now. Right? <laughs> my, my, my sword's still clean. <laughs> no, because the other... You've got to clear out the two. Yeah, yeah. The other six could still potentially be an issue. It's four more bodies there. How many times can you cast him for a It's just, if we're just standing here and waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, I guess we're going. Just uh, move him away. This just ruins Matt's dramatic encounter. <laughs> you don't need to have fun like that. He, he wasn't going to raise up anyway. It was, was going to be, because it would take too long to. Well, it's not taking very long at all. No, he, he was the super big bad. Yeah. 
That's I almost feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's perfect. You guys are you guys are owning it. And yeah, as a play test, there's obviously some things I have to think about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what are we doing? Uh, I'd be okay with casting more rituals, but I'm also okay with attacking them. <laughs> yep. Are you gonna stay there, or are you yep. gonna come back? Yep. Nope. Staying right there. All right. Um, I feel like I just want to stay in that spot and bring you to me. Yeah, that's probably. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do sacred flame on this one. Okay. It's a deck sixteen. Saving throw. I do that disadvantage. Oh, right, because he's asleep. Yeah. <laughs> it's a point. Do the stones crack again? Uh, not from Huskatoa. Okay. Yeah. He fails the saving throw. He takes 11 radiant damage. You're at the chain dragger. Eyes fly open. As he realizes he's under attack, but everyone gets <coughs> their attack. But we've got. Oh, and I'm, I'm just going to stay put on the head. <laughs> okay. You stand on the head of his fallen brother. Yeah, not trying to hide at all, just, you know, just, you know. Oh, he's right. coming for you. Yeah. <laughs> he's just sitting there like grinding his heel. Yeah. His yeah. <laughs> okay, so 200 year old grudge, buddy. Um, oh, um, the other two are going to get a turn now, though, at least. Yeah. I'm going to make the exact same move I did last time. <laughs> okay. Um, so, first is Well, it. who are you attacking? This is one I attacked. Can you yeah. see him? Yeah, oh, that's a good point. Can I see him from there? Probably not, right? You gonna come out into the light? No. <laughs> um, so you, you'll have to tell me how far the light is back, because it affects what I'm I doing. I mean, I'm pretty sure my sword is still on fire. It's, it's 40 feet from oh, me. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah that's oh, his sword is on fire too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which is 40 feet. He's yeah. gonna run up though, to be fair. It's funny, we've got two people with flaming swords and two people who are like hiding in the shadows. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, maybe we should have talked about this. I can actually move back to about here. Cool. No, yeah, it should be fine. Um, and yeah, no advantage, right, because he's awake. Um, no, it's still a surprise round, so you oh, can't yeah. yeah. When I say awake, he's get, you're almost attacking at the same time. Uh, 21. Hit. Um, a 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 damage the first one. Um, second with the surprise, so it's got an extra damage die. Um, and I'll do sharpshooter on this as well, so mm -hmm. like need a fight. Um, so that's <laughs> it's a one and a nineteen. So nineteen minus five is fourteen plus eleven twenty-four hits. Uh, and that is a one. Uh, I'll use piercing to re-roll that. Mm -hmm. So that's a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it's 14 plus 10, so 24. 24. Um, cool. Yeah. Second attack. <laughs> um, so that's 15, 26. 26. And yep. that's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that's 11 piercing. 11. And I'll use the Warpriest ability for my rose action for the last attack. I remember you doing this in, in sure. Ben's campaign. <laughs> <laughs> and I had sneak attack. And <laughs> Yeah. Um, I rolled a two and a five, so it misses. Yeah. So, okay. it misses. so that's three arrows that hit and the fourth one missed. Oh, it was 16, so I assume 16 misses. Just. <clears throat> just. Yeah. Well, actually, no. <clears throat> More than just. He's covered in chains. So the last arrow hits one of the chains of his cloak that's draped all over him. It shatters. Um, yeah, he's still standing strong. So I have to talk to him about this. <laughs> so then we go to Ludgob. I'm pure melee, so all I can do is come up, join the party. Yeah, run. Yeah. Uh, who's next? I'll be after you. And you're there. Uh, the white. Who I? That's me. Yeah. 
Yeah, so all I can do is run up roughly there. He can move and hold his action, right? What time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what you can do is you can move up to a point and say, when the enemy comes in range, I will do something. Um, and then you can roll your attack them at that point. So okay. But yeah. if he doesn't come up, you just miss. Yeah. <clears throat> and you have some ranged bard abilities, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm also going to do bardic inspiration on you. Mm. So what does that give me? I have no idea. Oh. Okay. D- 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 I get to re-roll like a saving throw? No, or? you add either a d6 what? or a d8 depending on your level um, to... You just got to remember that you've got it and can add it to a attack roll or a saving throw at some point. Mm. Lasts 10 minutes or something. And they married a couple of them now in the range again. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no. It's Honey feet, right? over. Yeah, it's 30 feet. Each of those is 5 15, feet. 15, 15, 20, 25, 30. Oh, okay, my bad. Oh, no honeymoon. <laughs> no honeymoon. <laughs> So is it my turn now? Yeah, if they come in range, I will attack. attack yeah. Yeah, yeah, Because bardic inspiration is bonus action, right? Yeah, bardic inspiration. You're a, you're a fifth level bard? Sorry? You're a fifth level bard? Uh, uh, four. Four, okay. So it's a d6. Cool. Yeah. I'm sorry, Matt. <laughs> I should have kept my mouth shut. No. <laughs> I, honestly, I had a little thematic thing that meant you didn't have to fight him. <laughs> so it's cool. I mean, it's just the cool model, right? <laughs> yeah, but now we don't have to fight him ever. <laughs> That's right. If you ever want, like, dragons, because I got the Dragon Head board game, board game, and they're, like, this big, so if you ever need some beautiful models, oh, just cool. let me know. I need it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from the darkness yeah. at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> we should have sheets behind us. Uh, I rolled a 12 on attack from our spectre, I'm assuming that misses. Yeah. Yep. Need an 18. Okay. Um, he says, for Wildgate! <laughs> and this is Wildgate. <laughs> um, Level 1 adventure. It's, uh, what was that? What was that one in the pit? The, not Betty, but the, uh, Doom, Doom Lord. Oh, Doom Lord. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, it was a Doom Lord. <laughs> and, 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 I, and I shocked him at the end. Right. Right. He's like, I'm going home now. <laughs> yeah, alright. I will just do some Eldritch Blast. Or Eldridge Blades yep. in my yep. case. Mm-hmm. You're a warlock, lean into it. A 26. Is it a hit? hit? I'm just going to roll all my attacks. That's okay. Mm-hmm. You get three or four? Four. 29. Yeah, I'm doing action and my bonus action. Um. Is the money a bit on the spectators as accent depending on? Doom Lord's just flashing his blades. And the highest on that one is a 30. <laughs> so that's three hits? Is three it? hits so far, another... And a, and a, the fourth hit was a 20. Yeah, that okay. hits. So now we will damage. You're a warlock paladin? Yeah. What a weird combination. It's actually really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hex blade um, too. Yeah. Hex because you can do, yeah, it's hex blade and divine smite, and, yeah. and it's all charisma based yeah. too. So that's why I've got I've got a couple of sorcerer. Fourteen damage, followed by fifteen damage, twenty-nine, followed by eleven damage, forty, followed by crit for twenty damage. So 60 in total. There we go. Jeez. That's a DPS. <laughs> <laughs> what do your Eldritch Blasts look like? I guess just shadow type. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're shadow blades that come out of the staff, just like... <laughs> Four yeah, of them. Yeah. And yeah. just ripping through, staggering the chain, chain dragger. But yes, also I, I have Elven accuracy and I'm cloaked in darkness. Yeah, for like extra. Just looking bad. Um, Shadows yeah. flitting around her, shadow blades flying off her um, as she brings the chain lord, chain jailer to his knees. Um, still standing, but looking gory, ripped open, ripped apart by all your attacks. And it's their turn. Well, we go back to the top of the table. Yeah, because we have surprise. But now they can have reactions? Yeah. 
And yeah, they're in the initiative order now. And it's Theron's turn. Okay. So is this one? She's going to be awake she, by the she's just screaming. <laughs> uh, yeah, so she's in the initiative order. Once your ath's turn is, I'll have him yell. And she'll wake up. Say, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> Bob's dead. <laughs> I don't know if I want to. I kind of want to, because they they're both going to be coming at us. I don't Probably wanna... at the one standing on their fallen brother's head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am being deliberately provocative here because I want to see if you hit me. I want you to try yes, and hit me. Yeah. <laughs> and what's your AC? Um, it's twenty three base. But the I bad thing go is, higher. bloody hell. The bad thing is too. I know you've got an ability that negates what he wants to do, but he doesn't know that. Uh, so yeah. yeah. He, he will go for you. Um, I'm going to do a bomb, bomb, bomb. Actually, that might be helpful. Who's up? You're after me. Are you probably going to go me way? You're going to rush someone and try and hit them? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to oh, guide. What is my speed them. actually? Can you? Yeah. Would you? Oh, you probably wouldn't be able to get up there. Oh, I have forty feet speed. <coughs> okay. Maybe, no, probably not, but um, I will guiding bolt him, this guy. Okay. So. Is that an AC? Oh, I'm doing it at level um, two, and I'm going to use my advantage, my inspiration, <laughs> for a 20. That's just hits. So, guiding bolt. Dun, 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 dun. I have 5d6. So it's 5d6 damage. 9, 12, 17 radiant, and the next attack roll on him has advantage. Cool. It's his go low next. Yep. Yeah. He's been, he hasn't got much life going on though. Um, yeah, what, what was his name? You're at the chain drag. Yeah, I'll just call him out by name. Like. Yeah. Yeah. He wakes. Uh, already bloodied mess. Shadows have ripped through him. Um, guiding bolts. What does your guiding bolts look like? Are you a, like a light type paladin? Yeah, it's it's he's he's a divine soul. Oh, okay. So it's uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so godly white lights yep. rip through him. Uh, but he his eyes blaze open and he screams, "Brethren, we are under attack!" And the two huge chains come out. One just. Mm, Flies across snakes towards you, chain snapping as it seeks to wrap around you. He's going to try and chain drag you. He rolls a four. <laughs> no, no. Or how do you know? Um, I'm, I'm assuming his bonus is at 19. Oh, it's plus 11. <laughs> That's pretty good. Plus 11. Yeah. But yeah, uh, you've got a shield, eh? Yeah. And you smash it aside and his other one ignores it. Uh, everyone individually and he'll just rip it across the ground um, hitting everything in his path as it just swings along hitting floor sparks flying up off the floor everyone in a 60 foot half radius cone uh, has to try avoid it it's probably the two of us so yeah. that's athletics or acrobatics? Uh, it's going to be a basic attack against your armor class. Okay. Um, so it's going to be uh, Lud, Gob, Theron, Illyria. You're out of it, um, Emery's. Uh, okay. So let's roll. Well, is he because he's hitting the? Because uh, he's, he's hitting the. His, okay. The corpse of his friend. Um, yeah. Does it maybe make someone wobble or something? Why do you want to? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Okay, so going for Ludgold first. He rolls a three plus 11, 14. Yeah, so I'll just jump over it. Yeah, you leap over it. Huge half walk leap as the chain carries on. Goes for Theron. With a seven plus 11, 18. Uh, and <laughs> s- s- carries on snaking around towards Illyria. I might be at a disadvantage because I'm in darkness. Okay, so 
Is that some innate magic darkness? Uh, a two the or shadow of moil. Yeah, a two. So, yeah, a thirteen is his lowest roll. And yeah, you, you dissipate away as the chain just passes through harmless. He, huge destruction across the corpses and everything in the room, but uh, missing all the adventurers in it. Um, that is probably your last attack. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we go to Emery's. Yeah. Emery's is going to aim for the other one. Oh. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, my this my arrow. That actually might work well if I can get the killing blow on dude. Oh, yeah? Oh, you're right. Emery's would go for the killing blow. <laughs> <laughs> so much like his, so yeah, much like his brother. <laughs> Just have to see him have a competition day. Yeah. Old Tim steps out of the shadows <laughs> and takes the last shot. <laughs> I feel like that could be a special ability. Yeah. You can call, call him over. once per day. <laughs> To steal um, your kill. Yeah, so I'll make one attack, uh, which was a <coughs> 19. Yep, um, it hits. Yeah. I always keep scrolling off the frickin', um, I'm not used to being on the actions page. Mm-hmm. Um, so that I'll use the pair thing to re-roll for this turn. So that's 6, uh, so that's 13, 14, 15 damage. Yep, still standing. Yep. Hits him heavily though. Um, second attack. <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, 18. Just hits, that's his armor class. Uh, so 6, uh, so 13 damage. Oh, 13, 14, 15 damage again. Another kill to old Emery's as the <laughs> arrow <laughs> thuds in to his huge beating heart through chain links and he falls back into the darkness of the corner. And the other ward stone on the other side Excuse cracks me. and shatters and the call of the bone lord to your ears only, Illyria, others can't hear it, just starts to come through louder and louder. And these four husks lying on the, on the cobbles start to twitch and move as if hearing them for the first time. Sweep from a bonus action. I'm going to look <laughs> at the other one with one eye and this thing hunters mark him. Okay, well, that's automatic, automatic, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I just deal extra damage if I deal, uh, hit him now. Okay, so... I'll cast it in with three. She feels the cold regard of old Emery's. Chills her to the bone. And it's her turn. Is it my turn? No, she's oh, her like, turn. Right. Hit, hit you in the initiative order. She just <laughs> yeah, hasn't had yeah, last. Yeah, she rolled a nine, so she goes before Ludgolf and Illyria. And yeah, she looks up. This half of her hair's burned away from her skull. It's just this diseased mess. Uh, skull showing. Big eye socket. As she takes in the room and sees the destruction, she glances where Husker told. The run reason for her coming back used to be and just sees still a pile of dust still disappearing in, in a slight breeze as shadow coils have flown around him and the chains have swept him. And she screams in rage. She is going to... <sighs> Alright. <laughs> She's going to unleash her most... Matt's like, this is my last hurrah. Yeah. <laughs> Most destructive spell, but there's one person in here who's immune to it, so I know who that is, but I'm going to roll randomly to see who she focuses on. So, um, a one or a two, it's going to be... Oh, I'm going to bring... Um, let's see how far so the range is. She doesn't know who's immune. Yeah, DM. Yeah, DM. Oh, okay. um, yeah. Matt, how does she see... Mm-hmm. How does she see? Does she see via dark vision? Um, yes. She can't see me then. He's invisible. Okay, we'll take you out of the uh, yeah. picking order. She just feels this dark regard on her. And I'm you. heavily obscured. Just <laughs> saying. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, Which also might mean uh, she can't see me. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, um, we'll say a one to eight is Lud Gob. A 9 to 18 is the man standing on her fallen brother, Mm -hmm. and a 19 or 20, she does see you. 
It's the one that is probably immune to this. She casts harm. She screams and casts harm. She releases, unleashes a virulent disease no. <laughs> on a creature. And you get to try and make a save. And if you fail, you take 14d6 necrotic damage. Half as much on a save. And that damage would reduce your hit points by that amount. So I can't heal above it until you cure disease. But... Oh, I'm immune to disease. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, she screams in triumph and she sees you standing on her brother. This green smoke comes off her arm that's almost bone with bits of hanging flesh on it and just <clears throat> spreads across to you and grabs hold of you and she screams in triumph as you disappear for it and as it dissipates, you stand there unharmed. Glowing softly. And then she says, Damn, Faye touched! <laughs> and yeah. I'm not taking any damage at all. I thought it was just the disease you resisted. Yeah, but it is, uh, it's classed as the disease, the spell. It's not even. It's... Well, it is necrotic damage. I mean, yeah, I'm immune to disease. That's what it says, right? Yeah. Um, I think that's what it was. And what, what are you, and you've got resistance to necrotic? Is that something you've got? I've got resistance to all spell damage. Let's roll a saving throw anyway mm -hmm. to see if you take some necrotic damage. You won't take the uh, disease part that reduces your maximum hit points in that. And if you save, you'll take no damage, right? That's how resistance works. Resistance is half. Oh, okay. So it would be quarter damage. Quarter. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, you've got to save against a. I'll just tell you her spell DC. 14 D6, right? Yeah, but. That's a lot of. That's lot the damage. damage. Yeah, yeah, no. It's a DC 18 you've got to save against. What's the con? Ah, uh, well, sorry. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. true. <laughs> Do you Can get. That's better. Plus <laughs> four from your charisma saving? I get plus four to being a paladin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I saw your characters, I was like, shit. Because a lot of you got resistance to necrotic damage as well. Yeah. I'd already made it. Well, I'm really glad I didn't go all in on radiant damage because I assumed they, would, they were undead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Emrys yeah. got no resistance. <laughs> <laughs> but we can't see him. Constitution saving. Constitution save. Oh, no, that's a fail. That's a uh, 10. Oh! So you're going to take. 14 D6. Can someone run that quickly through an app rather than Not quickly, on? but. Hold on. Wait, wait. Yeah, now we can just roll here. <laughs> but you'll still take half of this, right? Because you were resisting. Tell me when to stop. 14, 14 D6, right? Yeah, we're going <laughs> to. Uh, I went too high now. I'm on 19, I believe. Oh. Why am I not getting results? I then die but not dice. <laughs> this is gonna beat you. Six level spell. Forty eight. Forty eight? Yep. Oh, I rolled thirty five. We're going forty eight, but you're gonna halve that, right? Yeah. Quarter, well quarter it. Is that what you're well, I, I would have it on a successful save. Oh, you failed to save. Yeah, failed so, save. yeah. So, yeah, even though this is, this sort of spell has just reduced armies to corpses and, and, yeah, it rips away at you, but the disease doesn't take, so you can re-heal if you need to. Yeah. And you take the, um, 24 points of damage. Yeah, 24. Yeah. Okay. 24. I mean, I would feel disappointed if I didn't get hit. Yeah, so do you guys want to run now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just turned on us. Let's get out of here. Cool. Yeah. And also, um, one of the twitching bodies at the moment is the Chain Lord, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, the rituals? Well, no, I mean, the rituals are pretty long and we're in the middle of combat. If we're oh, <laughs> You do know, I'm going to say, Illyria, if one of them falls to your sword, yep. it's counted. No, it's a, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In battle, yeah. Um, it counts as a, as a champion a, of the Raven Queen. Hard to, hard to control, yeah. uh, dealing blows when you have some ego bound. 
Oh no, that's right. You did. You did do damage though. I'm not saying you have to do that. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah you've claimed. To... Yeah. Because yeah. what we're saying is, a champion of the Raven Queen has entered the battlefield, and as you win victories, you consecrate the battlefield. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and these people are part of, you know, almost under your blessing in a way. So yeah, your deaths claim these souls. Yeah, gotcha. It's just to stop them constantly resurrecting. And you know, well, to be so, fair, uh, their, their attacks took place yeah. within like a second yeah, of each exactly. other. So, yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Um, I definitely have like a devotion ceremony that we probably can say we did yeah, which in means. service of the... Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. I'm sorry, I can't stop doing the damage. <laughs> <laughs> so that means if he stabs every single one of those bodies... <laughs> just walk on. <laughs> doop, 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 doop. Yeah. 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 Um, Lud Gob, it's your go. Um, I'm just, I just see the twitching bodies and they just run screaming at them <laughs> and like jump in the air and try and swim. Great, go for it. Uh, you get advantage on the attacks. Okay. Uh, thirteen plus. <laughs> Uh, nine, so... <laughs> yeah, it's a hit. It's a hit? Okay. Uh, and damage is... So, it's 46 plus 5, essentially. Nice. <sighs> is that counting the flaming part of it? Yeah, it's on fire. Cool. Okay. So you're attacking that corpse? Yeah. That husk of a corpse? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and your fire damage doubles on these things. Okay, it's a 66 plus 5. <laughs> well, with a 2d6 double thing and then 2d6, so, yeah. Kind of wear you guys out with dice rolling. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no monks here, it's alright. Is that what monks are? Uh, 24 plus 5 is 20... Uh, 9. 29? Yeah. Okay, yeah, and yeah, it starts smouldering as it's twitching. It hasn't risen up yet. That's also only the first attack. I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. I need two. Yeah, mm -hmm. as a barbarian, that's right. So I swim again. Are you raging? Uh, no, I should do that, shouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> barbarian 101. <laughs> yeah, you're the, you're the calmest barbarian. Who's just <laughs> what does raging do again? It'll give you uh, plus two damage, I think, and it makes all bludgeoning, slashing, and... Piercing damage on you halved. Okay. And you and I think you've got a um, frenzy ability which gives you another attack. Okay. I read that because you're a berserker, and so yeah, when you're raging, you get a third attack basically. Okay. As a bonus action. I think so I use my bonus attack, bonus action to rage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I guess I'll swing again. Do it. Can I have advantage? Uh, that doesn't help much. Uh, 12 to hit. It misses. <laughs> you missed the court? <laughs> <laughs> it was twitching. Blind. Yeah. Blind. Big twitch. <laughs> Big twitch at the last. Yeah, it just twitched and rolled <laughs> off the thing. Okay, okay, but yeah, it's smoldering. Frenzy again. So yeah. Frenzy. Seven. <laughs> seven plus nine, which is sixteen. Sixteen, and the fire damage doubles again if you didn't count. Okay. So, sixteen yeah. hits. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Two, eight, seven. Twenty-one plus five, which is twenty-six. Twenty-six. So twenty-six, thirty-six, fifty-six. Oh, I can do multiple divides. Mine's. No. Oh, yeah. Plus two. Plus two. Fifty-eight. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah. when you crit. And you can blow all your divine yeah, smites. Basically, just pour it all into yeah, your crit. Yeah, 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 hold yeah, it off. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, I mean, you can't 
you can't put all the spell slots, but you, I've got two attacks per round, so I can do it on both. Yeah, one slot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, you've taken this one over half its life with those two powerful, fiery blows as, yeah, the flames peel back its skin as it starts to smolder and, and burn. Uh, very flammable. They're, they're, they're regular giants, though, right? Regular giant sized yeah. corpses? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. As, yeah the seven foot uh, orc standing over them, but he's even dwarfed by their 20 odd foot. Yeah, so I'm just going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and pleased to see them starting to burn as well. And then um, Illyria, holding your action to the end. Yep, I'm gonna. My spectre is gonna come over and do a melee attack. For Wild Gate! Uh, cool. <laughs> 19 plus 9, yeah. 28 for the attack. It's a hit. And then I, what is my specter's attack? <coughs> it is a something necrotic, I think. It's a 3d6 necrotic. Which one is it? Uh, 12 damage. Okay, strange thing is, when you deal that damage, oh, she hasn't no. taken any damage yet, but this doesn't do any damage to her. In Necrotic. fact, it seems to make her stronger. Oh, that's good to know. What sort of damage was it? Necrotic. Yeah, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, not, well, she's not undead, but sure. <laughs> I mean, uh, she's a necrobancer, yeah, so yeah. yeah. Um, I want to Eldridge Blade 1, 2, 3, 4. I thought you might do that. Yeah, it's nice. Mm -hmm. Claiming them for so, the Raven Queen. So, um, do I, can I just assume they probably all hit? Uh, <laughs> I'm about to roll 3. You got I mean, said 11, right? I could dodge. I have plus 11, and, but I'm also going to roll at advantage with Elven accuracy. Okay, yeah. Let's, let's, let's move it along. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. So, yeah. We can almost say these aren't even to... Um, kill them it's to claim them and it's to touch them the champion of the raven queen touches and claims these dead souls um so well, the i did 12 to that one if that matters since he's already yeah if you're counting these 8 12 14 i'm not okay it doesn't they're, matter yeah, yeah they're mm -hmm. all going to crumble because yeah, yeah. you've still got basically one ward stone the ward stones are still standing because the life force of one shaman's keeping them going, one champion. So, so the bone lord hasn't claimed them. They were just starting to twitch, maybe hear him, but now you've claimed them for the Raven Queen. And it, like Huskatol, they crumble to dust, <laughs> and uh, leaving a very confused orc standing over, <laughs> <laughs> stabbing a dust pile. Well, I, I'm just going to assume I did. Oh, of course, yeah. you pass it to smithereens with your powerful yeah. bows. Yeah. yeah. So all of them disappear? Yeah, somehow you took out all of them. Oh, yeah. four. <laughs> oh, that one's still there, I think. There was one left. Oh, there's only four. Ah. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, they all crumble to dust. Uh, and the other one, is that alive? Uh, is that still... It's a body, it's not like a... It, it's dead though. It's been it's, it's lying been, peacefully. It's been claimed. So it's not twitching anymore. No, because right. I forgot that um, J Rod's character had t hit it with attacks. Okay. Yeah, so it's been claimed by you guys as well. Tell me the battlefield looks a whole lot emptier. Mm. Yeah, just dusty. You're breathing in dead frost giants. So... Uh, then we go to the top again, Theron. Yeah. Almost dead there. Yeah, totally. You want to heal? You want? You can run. There's a rope at the end there. You could climb up. Get out. Yeah, I'd better just go hang myself. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it's, I, I, I'm assuming it's going to take me some move here, so I'm, I've almost got enough, but I'll just um, misty step. Yeah. Up into melee with it. Cool. Um, and I will attack. Right, what's she got? She's got the lowest armor class too. Um, 17. Just double check, I'm sure that's a hit. Um, yeah, that's a hit. That's a hit, all right. Uh, another third level divine smite. So I will do that first. Yeah, I'm thinking, so carry with the door. 
Oh, you're doing a divine smite. 14, uh, 22 yes. divine smite and 12 slashing. Oh, and 5 fire. So, what's that in total? I don't know. <laughs> uh, 5. <laughs> 22 plus 5 plus 22, 22 divine smite 12 long sword 5 fire what's that in total? <laughs> 22 plus 5 so it's um, 34 plus uh, 30, 39 39, 39. All right, and the second attack <laughs> oh, bloody hell. that is it's an 8 but it's still 19 uh, and I'll do. Have I got another third level slot? I think so. I think I've got three. Yep. Yep. That's another one. Third level one as well. So, can we just say that again? <laughs> Twenty-eight divine. Divine. Four fire. Twenty-eight. Thirty-two. Thirty-two and thirteen slashing. Thirty-two. Sorry. Forty-five. Good lord. So that's like all of my things. Yeah, this small slight alp is just sending a resounding blow after resounding blow into this haggard, stooped old lady. Some sort of crime, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, she's she's looking on her last legs too. Um, Yurath is down, Ismart's down, Emery's. Can you take the third kill? Um, if I yelled, could Tim hear me from here? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of tempted to spend my turn running back <laughs> to get him. Um, yeah, Emery doesn't want to kill. He's yeah. I'm gonna spend my turn going and grabbing Tim. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We'll give you a uh, you scramble up the rope, run down, maybe you're shouting, you yeah, know, you get in range. Damn, damn, I've killed two giants! <laughs> <laughs> I've left one for you! <laughs> you see the door, secret door burst open, and he says, step aside, brother. And yeah, he's slowly pulling an arrow out, has his cloak billowing behind him, but I don't think he's going to get there. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, there's a... Um, a slight nod to you as he walks past. Yeah. He acknowledges so that you're, like, what, you're giving him a moment. Um, okay. But it's old Mother Marrow again. <laughs> Tim steps around. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's going to reach down this disease-ridden arm and just grab your helmet as you try to get your shield up in mm-hmm. time. God, it's going to be so hard to hit, aren't you? Sixteen. <laughs> well, sixteen plus any. No, no, it was a five. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you're. Have you got the? You haven't got a special shield, eh? I do have a special shield. Okay, what is it? It's a shield plus three. Ah, uh, yeah. is that what you got? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm really sh- taking a shield. Yeah. This clawed bony hand. What it would have done is not only cast and flick wounds but also vampiric touch which would have healed her for a lot while dealing heaps of necrotic damage but your shield um, it's probably one of the most powerful artifacts in this land uh, flares we can say blessed by your god um, and she her hand burns at the touch and she screams as she tears it back looking at you with enraged eyes um, love gob it's your moment! Come on, man. Can you get up there and hit it? I can. I have 40 Excellent. feet move speed. I mean, yeah. that's more than 40 feet. Mm, no, it isn't. I've counted. Okay, good. <laughs> Let's give it to him. 35 feet. Yeah. 
He's leaping right. across the Six. cover guy. Oh, right, you're oh. Oh. <laughs> Seven, still raging. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, 12 plus 9. It is. Um, also, to let you know, if you wanted to, you could do reckless attacks, which means you get advantage on all your attacks, but anyone attacking you gets advantage. But tactics wise, she probably won't get an attack on you. If you yeah, so barbarians get a thing called reckless attack, which okay. gives them advantage, but opens them up to attack if you want right. to do that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that hits. Mm -hmm. um, so that's. Uh, is she, uh, is she does she take damage? extra fire damage? No, she's not a um, husked corpse. Okay. Yeah. That's she's cool. a living, breathing woman. <laughs> Had her whole life ahead of her. Well, <laughs> one of them. <laughs> uh, 18 plus 5 is 21. 21. 37. Okay, my, a huge blow from the sword. It knocks her back. Did I say 18 feet. plus 5? Oh, sorry, it's 23, I meant. 23. 35. Okay. Uh, yeah. In your onslaught, you're raging, coming at her. She's still standing, but uh, yeah, half her skull's been ripped off from a sword blow, and can't remember what else you guys did to her, but. <laughs> She's looking ragged. She's right. looking ragged. Very ragged. Oh, that's possibly going to miss. That's 15. Did you want a reckless attack? Oh, that'll yeah. hit her anyway, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's a caster, so her armor class is lowish. 14. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, then. <laughs> Uh, that's 20 plus 5, which is 25, plus 2 for both attacks. 27. So plus 4. Total. Yeah, I added that too for the last one. Okay. So yeah, she's barely, barely standing. But in the frenzy, you get another attack. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a hit. It's a hit. It's 18 before any yeah. fires. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we can say you've leapt off a sarcophagus, come down with a sword blow, another one, and just driving her back, and then standing over her. I'm sure you're going to finish it with this blow. Roll of damage, just so we get an idea. You reverse your sword and plunge it through her chest. Two, one, one, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> one. A mercy, a mercy shot. Uh, so that's, what's that, five plus five, ten. Yeah, you got to get over seven. <laughs> so, yeah. And then you plunge the sword weakly through her chest. And her arms reach up, disease falling off them, and then she collapses. And the entire... But I'm not sure, I didn't hit her just as an FYI. Yeah, but it's going to be enough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that you've all fallen under the, uh, for now anyway, the... Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, blessing of the Raven Queen as she's followed her champion into battle and claimed souls right brazenly in front of the Bone Lord, but the <laughs> Bone Lord doesn't want to test her. Now the and the last stone cracks too, which is well done because anything undead left in here would have risen. Um, Sorry, Tim, you're a bit too slow. <laughs> 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 Tim's already launched a bolt at the, the big one in the front there. <laughs> and says, How much XP do you get for a frost giant kid? <laughs> Levels up to level four. <laughs> I'm gonna dismiss my spectre. Dark Claude sword says, We did it! And then he disappears to pass on to a peaceful life. His uh, quest finished. His vengeance for Wildgate finished. Is there anything left behind of Huskatel's remains? Like any of his armour or anything like that? No. Uh, well, actually, you're right. There was a huge pile of armour in his weapons and everything. 
way too big for any of you to use, even with your amazing strength. Yeah, I just, I just, want, I just want a souvenir or something. Yeah. You could take a little pile of dust as well. Um, the only other thing, yeah, so you can grab, you know, he's, he's got... Is, is this temple, is it like up a mountain, up a hill? Yeah, it's at the top. Okay, how big's the, is it like concave, the armour? You want a toboggan down there. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't think we've got that much of a... I mean, it's a bit of a slope. You have to yeah, go out that way. It's going to take a while to try uh, it all out. I would yeah. like to gather as much stuff up to 500 pounds to take out with <laughs> yeah. me. Okay, yeah. You guys start learning. <laughs> What's also interesting, though, and does draw your eye, is this pillar of ice. Um, it's emanating cold. Uh, does anyone can I do an investigation? Yeah, oh, okay. let's let's see what you can discern from this. I have a really nice investigation. Would my, would my divine sense do anything? <clears throat> it it picks up undead and demons and stuff. I'm gonna say, yeah, you get the when you stretch out with the sense, you get the taste of just old primal magic on your tongue. Mm. It's almost a. Um, a bad taste for you. Mm. It's it's almost like blood magic, uh, the ancient stuff. I rolled a fifteen on my investigation. Okay, we're gonna probably say that you can make out some of the runes and um, some of your investigations and looking into the legends of this place. You feel that this pillar is a pillar of winter which is uh, just can I, the cold. Can I, can I further my investigation and cast a detect magic or identify spell? Yes. Um, as perfect, a ritual? As a ritual. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100% as a ritual. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, tw- but let it be like 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. You know. So, yeah, I guess Illyra just ignores y'all and just... Uh, starts messing with the ice. I'm yeah. Round okay. again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna saunter over and <laughs> press my fiery blade against it and see what happens. <laughs> Are you gonna shove your blade into it? Yeah. 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 While um, Illyria is looking at it, your book is actually scribbling as well, and you you're putting this together with some weird words coming from your raven, and this big orc has plunged the fire sword into this ice pillar as well while you're looking at it and you're kind of buying but yeah i don't stop i don't stop yeah cuts through quite easily and puts a huge crack starts to appear through it and it this flaming sword cuts through it like hot butter (laughs) and a huge chunk falls off and you realize to continue my um rituals and to include the nation spell Mm -hmm. to ask raven clean uh do I destroy the pillar of ice or the pillar yeah. of water? Yeah, and the raven beside you, her, you're used to its clicking. It's 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 um, it turns to you and says, "Yes, yeah. and this <laughs> this is the eighth pillar of Winter's Edge, and has caused the ice to come this far by." Destroying it, you start to destroy the hold the ice has on this land and the hold the Bone Lord now has. <clears throat> so that was the raven. Yeah, yeah. and but in a very feminine voice. Yeah. And yeah, while you're doing this, there's an orc happily destroying it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. did, did, did the, was it... Just to you, or does everybody hear that? The raven would have been for everyone to hear. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll, I'll walk over and just start. <laughs> can I my ask flaming blade? Your book for a second? No. <laughs> you can ask, but oh, you can't. Yeah. Okay. Do you mind if I borrow a page? No. no, you can't look in the book. <laughs> oh, I just want a page. No, you can't have a page. <laughs> okay, cool. I will find some page, like <laughs> paper around. Is that possible? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Here, some paper, and I, get, I just can get some other paper, just yeah, not from the fine. book. That's fine. Yeah, 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 just um, not from the book. Yeah. And then I'll like try and pick up a bit of dirt and kind of like try and sketch out anything I see on the walls to give to Trimlane later. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, she will eventually join an expedition to come here and yeah. totally, but yeah, that's great. She'd love that. And yeah, the two flame sword guys um, start to hack chunks, and soon the entire ice pillar 
the weight of it crumbles upon itself and it crashes to the ground and this huge this cold that was emanating off it that reached through your bones this whole fight then just suddenly just just goes and there was frost on the walls that starts to drip and mount and you actually feel like you're in a, a warm a warm cave um hot and we'll probably uh wrap it up there with just a little prologue as gunther's sitting on his porch overlooking sword jag valley and uh sipping a wine and he's lost in thought probably re recalling an old adventure but as he looks up for the first time he sees waterfalls on the other side starting to trickle and fall down the side of the valley as does he start to cry? <laughs> he raises his goblet. Yeah. He just raises his goblet and says, I knew they could do it. And takes a long sip. And yeah, so you guys did more than amazing. Because there was a lot of outcomes here um, where I didn't see any of this. I've, I've got to get rid of the surprise round, I reckon. Uh, well, I mean, I, I mean, now that it's over, I feel safe in suggesting this, but I reckon if you did, like, lair actions or something, uh -huh, like, something like this, yeah. lair, lair actions, they're, like, boss encounter oh, yeah, kind yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a good idea. I think, and, yeah, action economy-wise, you, you know, the surprise around would be walking up early yeah, or, yeah, yeah. 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 But what you've done is, because if you had only managed to... I thought you might manage to kill the shamans and then the others would... Rise and you'd probably say we can't do this. We have to get it out of here, and then they would have joined the Bone Lord later on for your encounters or whatever. Um, but yeah, you've reclaimed some of these northern lands now, which is going to have a huge impact on the empire. They won't be farming lands for a while because the earth was hard. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's there's always been a population crisis starting in Winter's Edge. Um, as you know, the Udai uh, plains people and that, you've started to open that up. It means you can travel further now north, even your smaller adventuring parties uh, and things like that. So well done. You, you, <laughs> and you took a, a little bit of damage. Does yep. it also mean the ruins of a school that was there? Thousands <laughs> well, of yeah. That's, will that become yeah. visible? Like, will that, like, just, yeah, I guess. There's a lot to, to think about and... Uh, and discuss, but you, your other party is already on their way. Um, they'll only hear about this news maybe later on, um, but that's going to have an impact on them as well. And yeah, these heroes are going to make a name for themselves. They've um, achieved, you know, they're going to be thought of as the ones that reclaimed part of this land for humanity, basically. Yeah, so well done. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still learning a lot about making an encounter challenging. Each of those was like a challenge ten creature. Dude, yeah. You've got to just ignore them. Because yeah, it's like, crazy. Every time I try to do it, yeah. it just doesn't work. Based upon the ratings. Yeah, the ratings are terrible. Yeah. yeah. Like even if you use like D and D Beyond in their encounter creator, like yeah. it's just all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been different without the surprise round, I think, but you, you still would have yeah. done it. Um, you guys were just tanks, man. And tough, but yeah. But I would have liked to let you do more abilities and stuff like that. But cheers! No, that was a, that was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Was no, fun. I mean, I, I I took damage, but I didn't get hit. So that, that's great. <laughs> yeah. It's nice when you have to be also smart. You guys were really smart. Too smart. Yeah. I'm just trying not to be. Okay, yeah. just hold up for ten minutes. All right, down ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> totally your thumbs.